Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Weird Bible Podcast. It has been ages. Uh, Isaiah was wandering through the desert for the last, uh, well, two and a half months. Um, <laughs> we just want to know, did you eventually find yourself? Yeah, basically. Uh, uh, it, it, no, I still have no idea who I am. It's <laughs> it, was, it was a complete, it, I, I, I kept walking in circles, apparently. <laughs> You know, it happens. Uh, no, no. It would not be the first time one of us or both of us walked in circles um, recently. <laughs> um, uh, the, yeah, when we were doing the Dennis it. Martin uh, case, oh, right, yeah. we walked around in a big circle. Yeah, That's fair. A relevant uh, joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, give me some credit. That was good. That was good. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> I'll give you all the credit. Thing. I just had no idea uh, what you were talking about. That. <laughs> uh, they want uh, you to, somebody been, in Super Chats I've wants you to watch The Chosen, by the way. You're fine. Somebody in Super Chat said they want you to watch The Chosen. I'm trying to think. I feel like I know. It's HBO Max, right? I've heard of The Chosen. Let me check. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait. The Chosen, is that the one? No, I was thinking that's the thing about Jesus' life. Before. It is It is that's the one about the Jesus. Bible. That's not the Chosen. It, it, it's oh, okay. the new one. It, so the, Bi the Bible was the one that was on when we were kids. Uh, this one is, is more about, uh, you know, it, it, it's a, I think it's a little bit less documentary style from my understanding. You know, it's on okay. Netflix. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's it's uh, from what I understand, it's a little bit more like uh, how, how do you put that? Um, more like a fan fiction. I, I gotta say, I love that. Um, when you Google the Chosen and you look up the show, uh, the first thing that comes up is the cast, and the you know primary lead actor is uh, Jonathan Rooney for Jesus. And then the first question that's being asked on Google is, "What religion is behind the Chosen?" I wonder. I wonder which one. Huh? Judaism, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I could have sworn it was Buddhism. I, I don't know. It seemed like Baha'i to me. <laughs> like, really, if we're being honest here. But speaking of Jews, um, that's what this show is going to be about today. So, uh, yeah, this is... we are. Uh, what a hard cut. <laughs> <laughs> I, it is. Um, you know, I think... Should be. As I was as I was doing the research for this, I started off and I was like, all right, I'm just going to give myself some background on on what was going on in the region at the time, you know, everything before. And then I was like, ah, you know what? In order for this to make sense, we kind of have to start with Samuel. Um, we can't really just dive into yeah, David without yeah. giving people an understanding of why David. So, you know, the, the yeah. story that happens in the first few books of Samuel is, of course, kind of giving us the information as to... How do we move from the judges period to the kings period? And the judges, of course, for Israel, mm. this is a time under which they were living kind of under the prophets is the idea, is that the people who were in charge were not kings, they were not hereditary, rather they were sort of appointed by God uh, to judge the Israelite people, to lead them in combat. Joshua would, I would say, would be considered, Moses, I guess, would be the first of the judges, but Joshua was the first, like, one who's really appointed before like as Joshua was the, the yes yeah the first true judge yeah yeah and then uh it, my favorite one of my favorite things about this show and about the bible in general is trying to determine the timeline because there's like the traditional mm -hmm. biblical timeline that has exodus being in the 1500s bc and then there's the revised academic timeline which suggests that exodus was probably closer to 1200 bc which is the one i i ascribe to um because just the the timing makes more sense. If the Jews were involved in the building of Pithom and Ramses, then they have to have been after, uh, they have to have been during or after the reign of Ramses. So it has to be around 1200. And I think that a lot of the reason that there's this disparity between the traditional dates for things and the modern academic scholarly decisions is largely due to archaeology. Because for a long time, we just kind of had this general narrative and we had to figure out where to put things. Archaeology is starting to give us better ideas. We're finding tablets that tell us when something was built, not just that it's there. So rather than having to kind of look around and be like, all right, well, uh, the pyramids are there. So the Jews were probably involved in that, right? It can be, okay, the Jews were involved in building Pithom and Ramses. Pithom and Ramses were built during the 13 and 1200s. Therefore, the Jews have to, the Exodus has to be after that period. And what you get to is, of course, 1200-ish BC for Exodus. And then this, what we're talking about here, is the 11th century, so the, the thousands BC. Correct? You would agree with that? Yeah, it's... Uh, I'm not... Like, we've talked about before. You you are much more knowledgeable when it comes to the uh, historical context of a lot of the <laughs> events happening. 
given the uh, all the biblical events that need to happen between then and the birth of Christ, yeah, that lines up. Yeah, it's it's a pretty pretty intense span of time. But one of I uh, one of the things that I think you'll have better insight here on is probably uh, what's going on here with Eli, because as we get into the story of Samuel, we just kind of jump into it. There's no as far as I'm able to tell, there's really nothing that introduces Eli as a character in the Bible, right? Before this? Uh, there is the mention, uh, we, we learned about how he was born. He was born to Hannah. Um, no, Samuel was born to Hannah. Uh, a lo- it- yes, and she gave him over to Eli. Yes. You're correct. Sorry, I got my You're wires good. crossed You're on good. the names there. My bad, my bad. <laughs> I was thinking like, I was like, whoa, 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 hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're correct. Um, yes, there's no mention of Eli other than the fact that his sons were, uh, the, there's mentions of like his children and stuff. He's mentioned as being one of the high priests of the temple. Uh, Hannah effectively gives Samuel to, to raise. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah, so he kind of he's kind he is introduced to the story as a mobile for Samuel, effectively. Yeah, and and what was I guess striking for me about this one was the the, the judges period is not something I'm especially familiar with. I, uh, but as I'm looking back through the judges, it's it, it, is Eli a judge? Uh, well, so judges weren't a precise series of people who rose up effectively mm-hmm. um there's there's some like arguments over like technically would the high priest have been a judge would any of the priests of the line of melchizedek be considered a judge not all of the judges were priests like samson absolutely wasn't a priest um ebra became a priestess but she wasn't whenever he rose to power mm-hmm. stuff like stuff like that so just worked effectively is it was in the time period whenever the children of Israel first time uh, had their stake of land. That's why Joshua was the first one to ever be called a judge, because Joshua was the one who physically took the children of Israel in Canaan. They set mm-hmm. up land, and then he became the judge. Mm-hmm. So Israel didn't have a king because their king was God. Mm-hmm. Now and then, the people would get themselves into some kind of trouble. They would worship false gods and give themselves away to another nation. So God would, for a time, choose a hero, effectively, to rise up and lead the people through combat. It wasn't a king. It wasn't someone who was a standing ruler over the people. It was someone who would get them through whatever trial they currently needed to go through. Again, people like Samson, Deborah, mm-hmm. what have you. Um, that means during times of peace... Technically, there were no judges. Mm -hmm. Everything was going fine. Or if, like, they were normally fighting wars, they would have their military captains. But since there was no need for a sort of hero to rise up, there would be a judge. So that's let there's a scholarly debate like, okay, well, Israel always had a judge, and the standing judge probably would have been high priest. In that case, it would have been Eli. Mm -hmm. Um, But he's not really called judge because he didn't have to do anything as a judge got it not really um at the at the end uh which we'll talk about in a second near the end of eli's life a threat rose up that called called um you cut out for a second there we're uh yeah no, we had a little bit of trouble here you. Sure. sorry my bad um <laughs> yeah, you're good just if you can just repeat that last like 30 second, seconds near yeah the end, yeah, you're good. Near the end of Eli's life, which we'll talk about, that required uh, Samuel to be considered. Um, which again we'll talk about. Yeah, yeah. You consider Eli a judge technically, but most people don't. Mm-hmm. Basically, just the high priest. Yeah. So I guess that's that's what I was trying to make sure I was I was correct on before I said anything about it. So I'm glad I'm glad that I have you. Uh, because what, what I was finding as I was doing the research is I, I got to check myself, you know, so I was like, I definitely don't have this right. Um, but yeah, cause there's definitely a distinction here between like high priest, prophet and King. And I wanted to make sure that we properly understood that and could explain it that, um, like we're all prophets, high priests. Oh, fun fact. Um, fun fact. At this moment, there technically weren't any prophets 
because right they're called seers <laughs> uh there, there were people who had prophecies mm -hmm. yeah correct there, there 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 were people known as seers uh, there were people who uh, god would like god would give moses prophecies to the people and stuff like that but while we look back and consider moses a prophet moses wasn't really considered a prophet at the time right however which we'll get to that samuel whenever the time of the judges is way with an office of a prophet not just a prophet in the way that they can see prophecies prophet as it's defined in the old testament is people who have a certain code that they live by there's certain requirements for what dictates them as a prophet and prophets rise during this transition effectively so samuel is which i don't know if i'm getting too far ahead of what you want to say You're fine. samuel is the last judge and the first prophet mm -hmm. um Gotcha. Then Samuel begins a lineage of prophets after him. Yeah, it's it's weird. I was I was looking into the. It, it's you expect everything like this to have sort of a concrete definition and you know simple terms that are laid out for you. I think we have this very. I would date it back to the medieval period or even the Romans of these regimented positions and structures where you know this guy's job is quaestor, this guy's job is cardinal, things like that. Back then, it's not quite like that. We're looking at a time where we're much, much more in flux, where somebody can be a priest and a prophet, somebody can be a priest and a judge, somebody could even be a priest and a king maybe later on. But you know that that's it's not these like distinct, explicit boundaries between things. And I think when people look back at the Bible and they try to understand and wrap their heads around certain things, they're looking at it with kind of a 21st century or even like a modern, just Western understanding of roles and responsibilities that weren't there for these biblical characters because they were kind of filling roles as God needed them to fill roles rather than filling roles because it was what was elected, so to speak, you know? Yeah. yeah. And there's, there's a lot of uh, people who kind of have rise to the occasion. Needed One of the best examples, uh, which it's also a beautiful picture in the Old Testament that needed um, during the time when all the men were to war, uh, God chose Gideon that she was a child mm -hmm. effectively um who ruled as a judge throughout his life in the beginning he was known as a boy to start an army because no one expected a boy mm -hmm. uh whenever the people were in bondage and could have put to an army together god gave one man the strength of an army that mm -hmm. in samson mm -hmm. so there's like it, it's interesting to see that effectively god always knew what the people needed and he always made sure it was provided with a judge right. um up until Again, you get up some until of these Samuel, who's the point where everything transitions. Yeah, yeah because and and where we get to, uh, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. But uh, Samuel, he you're good, you're good. He's uh, it seems like the reason for him is that Eli's sons are just not cutting it. They're, they, I mean, I mean the the exact sin that's given is that as women line up to to the tabernacle to to ask questions, to pray, to offer sacrifices. They are, uh, to put it the way the Bible does, betting them, um, rat, which they're not supposed to do, obviously. There's... In the front of the temple, yeah. out front of the temple, they are betting women, which, oh, talk about a no-no. <laughs> so, yeah. No shame for them. Women are kind no. of, literally kind of being like, hey, yeah, le legit, this guy's coming forward, like, or women are coming forward, like, hey, can you help me pray? And they're like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. why don't you come over here? <laughs> yeah, um, there's this whole new special kind of like, prayer. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, so it's no, the evil. Yeah, and evil. so there's yeah. this like it, obviously with with the Bible, there's all the God is all knowing, and there's plenty of arguments to be made about what the direct nature of omniscience is, whether it's you know everything that can happen or everything that will happen necessarily. But it seems like you know the the free will aspect really comes in solid here. It's one of the most essential aspects of the Abrahamic faith, so that you you are not predestined to to do anything necessarily there are a number of factors that can affect you and you can make your own decisions the calvinists do not agree um <laughs> but some some catholics do it's weird uh but they're making decisions that kind of disqualify them in god's eyes so god has this whole arrangement where he's made hannah's womb barren and then hannah prays for just one son because the other the other wife of her husband whose name is escaping me right now it's uh why am i missing this um 
She's not important. Uh, but... <laughs> I, I remember I, I Anne's name. I, I don't you, remember I her husband's name. name. Well. Uh, but she's yeah. she basically goes to God and begs and says, "Hey, can you know just give me one son? My the other wife will not let it go. She keeps making fun of me for not having kids. She keeps treating me as lesser because I don't have any kids. If you give me just one son, I'll give him over to you as as yours. He will serve God his entire life." So she does that, and not only is does God say, "Sure, here's a kid." But he then actually gives her more children. She has several daughters and sons. So God takes t- basically takes Samuel as a loan. He's like the the down payment on this loan that she's going to get the, the rest of her kids. Mm. Um, it seems like that's not even part of the deal. Like she really is like, I just want one son. But since she is a good servant, she is rewarded. So there's and, and in the Bible, there's a lot of these little things. I think people kind of look at the overarching story of like Jonah is a very short book. and It has a very poignant story. There's like really two things in there. One is if God tells you to go into a dangerous situation to save people, you do it. And the other is if you succeed in your mission, you shouldn't have spite for the evil. Once they've changed their ways, you should forgive. Those are kind of two messages that are prominent in Jonah. Pity for the gourd. I was going to say, you forgot the most important one. You must have pity for the gourd. gourd. Exactly. (laughs) Um, It is an essential aspect is the pity for the gourd. Yeah um yeah so you've got that and then uh (laughs) and then with with samuel there's like a different message in each chapter almost where you've got this one which is you know do what's right you'll be rewarded and then you've got what happens to to eli's sons which is of course they're doing all these terrible things and the very the very first prophecy samuel gets is hey eli your kids are gonna die tomorrow like of course, God tells Eli this first. <laughs> he's, he goes to me, he's like, you know, you didn't do anything to stop your sons from being awful people. So mm-hmm. now they'll be taken from you because you had a position of power and you abused it. You failed to protect the people. You are the high priest. Why are you letting this happen? Eli, you know, the next day they go to battle against the Philistines. And Samuel gives the first prophecy where he's like, you're, you know, you're God will punish you. He goes out. They fight the Philistines. The Philistines defeat them. And then... Of course, they bring the Ark from Shiloh, which is, at this time, we're not actually in Jerusalem yet. I think a lot of people associate ancient Israel with Jerusalem. There was a a very distinct, like, 200-year period between Israel making it out of Egypt and Israel getting to Jerusalem and claiming it for themselves. So they bring the Ark of the Covenant down to where they're fighting it, Ebenezer and uh, Afek. And these, these locations are about, like, 20 to 30 miles northwest of Israel or of, of Jer- Jerusalem for those who need somewhere to put it uh, just east of Tel Aviv here we're talking within a day's travel in all of these cases um, or at the very least a couple of days I uh, you know not not difficult journeys and it gives you a better idea of the scope of these wars Israel is not a large kingdom uh, Philistia is not a large kingdom the Philistines themselves are a mystery to this day we don't really know who they are or where they came from and the the region they're referenced in is also referenced as being the home of the Canaanites and the Phoenicians by those words in the Old Testament. Um, although I think I think they use the term Phoenicia exclusively in the New Testament, right? I think. Uh, yes, to my understanding, yeah, I, because if I'm pretty sure that that comes from Greek, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it originally wasn't written in Old Hebrew. Yeah. No, I think yeah. If I remember correctly, uh, or Canaan or and... New Testament languages. Yeah. Um. The I mean, and I could go on about Canaan and Phoenicia and all the things. For those who don't know, Phoenicia is uh, it was a a set of trade cities. You might recognize a similar concept in Game of Thrones, where you've got uh the the free cities to the east. Those are kind of modeled off of these Phoenician style trade cities. The city of Carthage and the Punic Wars. Carthage was founded by Phoenicians. Mm-hmm. So while they fought Rome, their homeland, Carthage began as a colony of the Phoenician city of, I want to say Tyre. Tyre. Um, I might be wrong about the specific one, but I think it was a Tyre city. And so Queen Dido flees to Carthage, sets up a settlement there. It becomes the, the first Western Mediterranean empire. Um, that's not the same people necessarily, because we're talking about you know, 1200 to 1000 uh, BC. So you're looking at a group of people who modern historians and archaeologists still aren't sure who these people are we think they may have been mycenaeans they may have been greeks maybe people who fled minos uh maybe people who fled uh crete 
but we don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. The reason that they're thought of as being Greek is that they had this system called the Pentapolis, which was five cities that worked together. And this is something we saw commonly in Mycenaean Greece as well, was you'd see these leagues of five very closely linked cities that all had the same culture, but not necessarily the same king. They'd each be city-states. So it seems like they're functioning like Greeks, and that's why we kind of assume that they're an Aegean people. We don't know for sure. It's hard to tell. But... Um, they go to battle against these Philistines who are in what is today modern Jordan and southern Israel. And what they end up doing is losing, bringing the Ark, and then losing the Ark. <laughs> and the at the moment of losing the Ark, when this is told to Eli, uh, he's told that his sons have died, and he kind of is like, ah, that really, that really sucks. And then he's told that the Ark has been lost, and he immediately faints, falls over, cracks his skull open, breaks his neck, and dies. What a way to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> everyone thinks the yep. Bible is, you know, such a chill vividly. little book. I, I do have a quick question for both of you that I want to cover before I we... vividly remember... I, I was just going to say, I vividly remember as a child being in Sunday school and having the visual of an 80-year-old man falling two stories backwards and busting his skull open on the rocks and mm -hmm. dying. I'll never forget that. Like, oh okay <laughs> yeah that's the other thing is like it, some of these ages eli is like they they really bury the lead because in the beginning of the book it's like oh okay eli he's he's the high priest okay cool he's an adult man he's mm -hmm. been around for a little while they get you to this part of the story and it's like and eli was 98 years old and mostly blind and had ruled as judge for 40 years and you're like why is he on the battlefield yeah like, <laughs> what is he doing here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those guys stayed at it man they were they were running running strong straight into that grave <laughs> they weren't quitters that's for sure they were not uh, it, this happens with a lot of biblical they figures yeah, they're just they going were. until the moment they die and it's really impressive i mean you got to respect the hustle oh absolutely but yeah. real quick before we continue with the story i do want to uh, ask a question to both of you for those who may not be that familiar with it uh to clarify for me two things and Aiden then is acting as our surrogate for the audience, the audience. Yeah. <laughs> um this is good. This is good. I like this. Yeah. Clarify two things for me. And then because if the answers are what I believe they are, I want to harp on the significance of this happening. What is the case that the line of judges and the line of prophets both come from one lineage each? No. No? No. The judges come from multiple houses. Okay. But then all of the prophets come from Samuel's line. Is that right? I'm going to throw that one to you. So they they come from Samuel's line in a symbolic sense that they all follow after the lineage of Samuel in mm -hmm. teaching and doctrine. Okay. But the prophets do come from everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, as okay. as what happens whenever we get into the time of the prophets in the divided kingdom, like whenever Elijah is around, mm -hmm. there are hundreds and thousands of prophets. Okay, there's like not just the ones we read about in the Bible. There's a ton of them. Um, but they're, they're considered the prophets after Samuel because Samuel was the first, um, whereas judges were effectively picked from everywhere. Just one-offs people like Gideon was a child. Uh, he was 14. I think he was just working in the field and an angel appeared and is like, Hey, you're a judge now. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it was very just the, when, it, when your number gets picked, you're up. <laughs> So. <laughs> that's hilarious well yeah so that actually decreases the importance of what i was going to say but i think it's still worth harping on is the this transition from the judges period to the prophets period it you know I, I would imagine this is kind of like the only time where that major transition really happens in terms of you know how the, the i don't want to say the rules of uh you know gods essentially throwaways from the angelic to humanity or is that accurate because I know you said that the ruling of how judges lived and practiced essentially versus the way prophets lived and practiced changes. So I kind of wanted to focus on like what exactly, what is the value and importance of that happening and how big of a shift was that? It's kind of a shift into the modern, not quite the modern system, but I guess if you look at like the, the, the way the Roman imperial system in the East worked between the church and the, the, the throne, mm -hmm is kind of what you see set up here, which is that the the king who will be appointed in this very story is is chosen by God. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the prophet is not the king. The prophet is more like a, a spiritual leader, a faith leader. So you kind of, you're splitting this from there being one human or a set of humans, but with one main human who then oversees them 
to you're going from one human who communicates with God to one who rules for God and one who speaks to God. So Interesting. And they work together in tandem, if that makes sense. Am I right about that? Yeah, uh, in theory, correct. Yes, that is the way that it would work. It's the idea. They did it right. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. Uh, uh, so what happened is it was supposed to just be judges in Perpetuum. It's just supposed to be like, all right, you got to judge. Whenever you guys get yourself into some mess, guy's gonna, guy or gal or child is going to come forward, and I'm going to give them orders to get you out of that mess. Uh, and that's what's supposed to be because God was supposed to stay their king. And I don't want to jump the gun too soon on what you were getting to, Aiden. We can <laughs> get fine. back on direction. But the people are like, nah, I'm good. I'd rather not have that scenario, which caused... Ju See, God didn't want to get rid of the office of judges. The people wanted to get rid of the office of judges. So... It's for that. Uh, we lost which, you for a second we'll, we'll there. Can you repeat second, that? But, yeah. I said, I said the uh, the prophet king system was effectively a compromise because the people wanted to get rid of judges. Yeah. Um, but which we can get to the specifics in a second. But you can, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, effectively, it would have been best if they just stuck with judges, but they do not like what's best. But, yeah, it's it's a common theme in the Old Testament, really. That just the what the people want is is they think they know what they want mm -hmm. and then it doesn't go well for them. Yeah. Huh? yeah I was saying to Aiden early, earlier, it's and like, the more like, I learned, yo, this. whose idea was this? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it seems like humanity just like keeps questioning. It's like, God's like, this is best for, for you. Like, this is what you should do. And humanity's like, eh, really feel like it. And then they make the decision. And then they're like, mm, okay, so maybe you were right. Yeah. It's uh, another thing that I, you know, I, I feel like we can't brush over here is, you know, Samuel is a child at this point in time. How old and, is he? It doesn't say specifically how old Samuel is. We don't have a birth date for okay. him, but he's a child. He he's he's a a young man. Um, and during this early bit of his life, like he when he first hears God calling to him, he thinks it's Eli. He thinks Eli's in the other room, like, "Hey, Samuel, come here for a second. I need you." Mm -hmm. You know, like, and Eli. So he goes to Eli the the day that Eli gets this exact message from God, like, "Oh my gosh, you know, you, dude, you." really should arrange your kids in now i gotta kill you um also a, an important thing to note about the old testament is that very often like if if one of his appointed people is not doing their job god's just like you better shape up or i will kill you i will do it right now uh we talked about this in the exodus episode where god comes and he's like you better circumcise that kid right now or i swear to me i'm gonna kill you um do we know what happened to the people that god smited they they died. No, I know, but like, do they go to heaven, hell? Like, do we know anything about that? The heaven and hell concept hasn't really solidified at this point in the narrative. Got it. Okay. Um, we have an entire episode about the heaven and hell <laughs> situation, um, where it's like, is this a what is this? What is going on here? Did did it change? Uh, like, but yeah, well, we can get okay. into that at another time. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so Samuel's a child when all of this happens, so it's not a direct change during this battle where I uh, the where Eli dies and Eli's kids die and the Israelites scatter and the Ark of the Covenant is taken by the Philistines, which is not a good thing at all. Um, he, he's a kid, and it's actually a long time before there's a, the Bible does this a lot where they just kind of casually jump twenty years, but that happens here uh, because when the Philistines take the Ark. They first bring it to, uh, I have it written down the exact city somewhere. Um, yeah, so they bring the Ark to Ashdod, which is a city that is about 30 miles west of Jerusalem. And uh, the immediate thing that happens is one, a story that Isaiah has actually told before on this channel uh, about the statue of Dagon. Yeah. Yeah, where, do you want to tell Just it? Just put you it, tell it up better next to our fish statue. It's the <laughs> worst that could happen. Yeah, so the... Uh... They steal the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, which the Ark of the Covenant was a very big deal at the time. Uh, before the Holy Spirit, before the temple was rent with Christ's death, uh, things of God moved quite physically on earth. Spirits were a very physical she tied to objects in some cases. And an angel was tied to the Ark of the Covenant. So the uh, Philistines take the Ark. They're like, haha, we have the children of Israel's magic talkie box. <laughs> so they take the box they're like, we're going to give it as a sacrifice to our god Dagon, which Dagon's like a fish god. Mm -hmm. And the statue of Dagon is like, it's, he's got like the tail of a fish. And like, I think normally he's depicted as both of his hands being up. Mm -hmm. They've got like this altar of this fish god. 
and they bring the Ark of the Covenant and set it down in front of him. And they leave. And the next day, they cack in. You're all's video. Am I still heard to some degree? You're you're breaking up a degree. lot at the moment. <laughs> can you still hear me? We can now. Better now. He's a fish man right, who cool, has his cool. hands like this. Um, is where we last heard you. And who has his hands up? So the the Philistines leave for the night. They come back the next day, and the statue's fallen over, and the arms have been broken off. So mm-hmm. They're like, "What? That's ridiculous!" So they reattach the arms, put it up. The same thing. The next night, that happens again, and the next night. So every night they try to leave the Ark of the Covenant around their false gods. False gods literally start to topple over. Yeah. yeah, they literally just it, God's being very petty. <laughs> it's like. Oh. I mean, he you, th- you put the Ark of the Covenant there, God just starts acting like a cat and knocking your stuff over. I mean, he threw it in the commandments, so, like, of course, yeah. he's going to he, he's gonna take that seriously. Yeah, it's like, of all the, that, that Ark has the Ten Commandments in them. The Ten Commandments say, do not worship other gods before me, and he's they put it next to another god. It's like, what precisely did you expect to happen? Uh, but my one of my favorite things about this one, because I love the, the mystery of this, of trying to, like, understand what people writing 3,000 years ago meant, um... The next thing that happens is it starts giving people tumors. Like they just, they they erupt in tumors all over the city of Ashdod. And there are a number of suggestions here. Uh, One is that it was plague, like bubonic plague. And that, you know, that's, that's what was happening is somehow like God called down the, the plague and it spread throughout the city of Ashdod. And they decided we just need to get rid of this ark. Some other suggestions have been a little bit more fun, like Ancient Aliens' version of it, um, which is that the Ark held a radioactive, like, super weapon. I was and, gonna say, I'm thinking God pulled a McCarthy over here. Yeah, and, like, you know, the, what the what this was was actually cancer. Um, and that, so what they do with it, though, is they I take it... A McCarthy over here. <laughs> they take it and they, they bring the Ark out of Ashdod and they bring it to Gath. But when it goes to Gath, which is a, a little bit closer to Jerusalem, actually, it's 10, 10 or so miles east of Ashdod, the same thing happens there. And then they leave Gath and they bring it to Ekron, and the same thing happens there. It's just constant tumors. Uh, it does say that a plague of rats also springs up. It's hard to determine if the two are like directly connected, if the rats are carrying the plague, or if the rats are there because of the dead bodies. You know, however you will assume but yeah they take it uh they take it to gath and why can't we steal this magic box everyone keeps dying what's the problem (laughs) we took this box from their god and some things are going wrong and i really don't get it Uh, but what do you do you remember what they do uh what their their i'm sorry present is because i thought it was really funny uh i don't what is it they fill the ark with five golden tumors and five golden rats, one for each of the kings of Philist- Philistia, and then they just take it back to Israel and they're like, "Here's your, here's your box of death. Please take it back from us." But they bring it to they bring it to this city, uh, the Beth. They, uh, what is it? It's a uh, Beth Shemesh. They bring it there, and the people of Beth Shemesh are like, sick, we got the Ark, I wonder what's inside. And then 50,070 of them die. <laughs> like, you, you read stuff like that, and you start to understand where the, the ancient box. aliens people are coming from with the whole nuclear weapon idea. I mean, like, yeah. I'm not saying they're right at all. I'm just like, I kind of get where they're coming from. Yeah. You know? yeah so I, I mean, I guess that's a good, a good opportunity to ask, yeah, like, because yeah. I'm curious, what do you think about Real it? Like, what do you think? Hours. yeah really indiana jones hours what what do you think the nature of the arc is like what's the sense you get oh well, it's pretty well defined by um in the book of leviticus mm-hmm. it's also mentioned a lot in exodus so the the ark of the covenant is exactly what it says it is an ark so it is something to maintain safety of the promises that god has made for the people mm-hmm. inside of the ark of the covenant are the ten commandments uh, it's Moses' staff, Anna, and it is uh, something of Josh, Joshua's sword, I believe. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is uh, all our items that God placed a covenant on. Right. Uh, he, whenever he Moses raised his staff, everything he did with that, the Ten Commandments, obviously, they're all promises 
promises that God made. So it's a it's effectively a security box of those promises that, as assigned to the people that those promises are never delayed, that God hasn't forgot about them. Mm -hmm. So atop the Ark of the Covenant is the mercy seat. So we lost you for we, we heard atop the Ark of the Covenant. The covenant. Your... We heard atop the Ark of the Covenant, then you cut out for a couple of seconds. Can you can we rewind? Top the Ark of the Covenant was known as the Mercy Seat. So this is kind of hard to think about if you're thinking about it in a modern sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but before the time of the Holy Spirit and before spiritualism, uh, things that happened on Earth were much more physical. Mm -hmm. They were much more um, direct. You go to this, you do the thing. So whenever the priest, which was Aaron originally, would go to the Ark of the Covenant, and it says that God would come down from heaven, he would set up the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. so ever priest would intercession for man standing there, it was quite literally someone talking to God or talking to an angel, perhaps, on top of the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. That was the physical landing pad for God whenever he would come and speak to the high priest. Right. And it says that the Ark of the Covenant was guarded by cherubim. The, uh, there's an image of two golden cherubim on top of it, mm -hmm. but that physically the ark was guarded by cherubim. Yeah, they were just staking the reason it out. that people kept dying everywhere uh, the Philistines took the ark is because there was literally an angel bodyguard for it wherever it was, and every time they tried to meddle with it or break it, they just no, <laughs> don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, just getting smacked down, <laughs> just wiped out. Like it's yeah, yeah. Do not touch this ark. <laughs> And you really think you got to wonder, like after the first time, did they really like were three were three tries necessary here? Like you you bring this thing into your settlement, it immediately causes mass widespread suffering and death, and you're like, you know what? Let's see if this happens to the next guy. Like, but I mean, they they finally bring it back somewhere else. Yeah, they they finally bring it back, and fifty thousand seventy people die. Um, and then the ark finally makes its way to uh. Kirjath Jarim, which I might be butchering that pronunciation, but it stays there for 20 years, and I, we get literally no information about what happens during those 20 years. We can kind of just assume it's, it's peace, I guess, or the Israelites are, like, you know, not constantly being in conflict with the Philistines, but during that 20 years, Samuel grows up, and then he begins his ministry, like, for, in, in full. And the very first thing he does is go to the Israelites because it took them 20 years of no ark to start uh, worshiping idols again. So they, they have, uh, we get this, the, the first thing he does is he tells the Israelites to get rid of their balls and their Asherahs. And a lot of people have, this is, this is what drives me nuts about the narrative that Judaism originally was a polytheistic religion or a dualist religion where God had a wife named Asherah because it's very obvious if you read through the Bible, other than just taking things out of context, that the belief system here was that there were gods and goddesses of other countries. That's what the term Baal and Asherah mean in the Bible. There is there is a Baal that is the name of a god in Phoenician uh, you know, uh, religion, but that's not the way that the, that the Jews use the word in the Bible. They're using it as a general Baal is male goddess, Asherah is a female goddess. There is an Astarte in B Babylonian mythology. There is a Baal in Phoenician, but this is at no point is this like an accepted thing in Jewish religion. You know, there yes, there were Jews, there were Israelites who worshipped other gods, but they were not supposed to be doing that. And so the very first thing Samuel does when he gets there is he goes, "Hey, uh, no more of this. We're done with this now. Um, and now we're going to drive the Philistines out." And I think that there, it's an important theological point to make that the Israelites fail consistently when they're worshiping other gods, when they're dividing their attention. And then the second somebody comes along and tells them to get rid of stuff, they start to see success again. You know? Um, it's crazy. <laughs> it's how that works. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he... Uh, so what, what wow, they... that's great. you mean this god who we who like physically comes down and forgives us the sins and takes us to heaven 
mean, we don't need to have a bunch of other random ones that we worship every now and then. Wow, what a yep. wild idea. It's weird but... that they keep going back to it so consistently, like so quickly. It, As a historian, it suggests yeah. to me that they were living a lot more closely with the Canaanites and the Philistines and all of that than we tend to really think about. And I think people think about these terms, these things in terms of modern boundaries, like you've got national dividing lines. You got to remember, these are tribes and city states who are constantly migrating through each other's territory. You know, the, the Israelites were pretty much nomadic at this point. They mm. were settling, they were beginning to turn into a legitimate polity, but they were still 12 tribes that were wandering around in the desert. Um, you got the Benjamites, the Levites, the, you know, everyone else. I'm not going to go through all 12 tribes, but um... Um, people have short memories, too. I mean, in 20 years, like in terms of biblical time frames, that's not very much time at all. But no. in terms of like actual human lifespan, 20 years, a lot can change. And it doesn't yeah. surprise me that like, you know, if if the covenant or if the ark was taken away and they just kind of were like, what do we do now? And then, you know, over the course of two decades, mm -hmm. they suddenly start to fall back into these, you know, different religious sects that are surrounding them. It makes sense. Well, it also makes you wonder to what extent, um, you know, the, the Jews and the priests of the time were aware of some of these other religious aspects and these other gods. And did they think of them as necessarily something that didn't exist? Mm. Or was their opinion of them that these were some form of divine figure, perhaps between angels and god or a level of angel like i think you know we have this very again it's all based in kind of these medieval catholic practices that spread throughout europe and they formed the way that modern people think about religion mm. you know you gotta wonder and, and i guess I, I would ask your take on this isaiah like to what extent do you think that the israelites were sitting around acknowledging these guys as real real beings versus you know stuff that was totally made up by satan to, to trick people like what do you think uh well, they certainly were real to a degree they had power you know fair i've mentioned it before mm -hmm. on the podcast but pharaoh's magicians had power right uh, and there's other other gods of their tribes who are mentioned elijah challenged the prophets to magic but it says that the the prophets weren't just lying that they also practice magic of mm -hmm. some sort um there were definitely these creatures had some level of power uh, but it's also mentioned by several of the prophets that the devil's angels have disguised themselves as gods of men. The devil's I mean, it's what? pretty clear to me that a lot of these ancient deities that you think the devil's angels, gotcha. uh, the, or the, the, the opponent's angels or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, it describes them as being, making themselves gods among men. Mm -hmm. All, I, I, like, I believe that most of these were just demons that have inserted themselves as a god among mm -hmm. certain nations. Um, yeah, of course they're going to give people power and things like that, but it's obviously nothing compared to, you know, the the one at the top of the ladder uh, who they should be focusing their attention on but won't. Yeah, so to to clarify, when you say demons, what 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 is your definition of that? Uh, fallen angels. Fallen angels with okay. Lucifer. And this is this is something that my stepdad brought up in conversation, just as a kind of an aside. He's reading through Michael Heiser's works. I'm uh, I'm about to start. Um, what what are your thoughts about like the idea that specifically that term i'm trying to remember exactly which uh i feel like it's deuteronomy um but where god divides the nations amongst the princes amongst the elohim what do you what do you think of that is that him giving each angel control over a nation each angel a, a paid like a like you know how you have the patron saints is do you think that's what's going on there mm -hmm. At, or are these not angels or are these some sort of higher classification like what do you think's going on uh, i i it's probably a, just a, because there's the mention uh, in the book of Daniel about things like the Prince of Persia, mm -hmm. uh, which is not a physical human prince. It is an entity. This one's malevolent, though. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it seems to be, again, one of the fallen angels. So it seems like there is... Uh, so God has given certain angels authority over different ones. And it does say that each of the tribes of Israel, I forget what the verse is, but each of the tribes had uh, an angel mm -hmm. over them, and a presiding angel, which is where the Catholics get a lot of their ideas for, you know different angels of different mm -hmm. things. But, uh, it seems that God presides certain angels to watch over certain areas. Again, at this time in the Bible, things were much more physical. The Holy Ghost didn't exist. Christ didn't dwell within us. Things like that. Uh, Christ didn't ex exist yet physically. Mm -hmm. So at this time period, uh, 
uh, where everything happened directly in a much more straightforward sense. So during that time, there were angels presiding over the different regions of Israel. Mm. And it seems that on the mirror image of that, the devil had angels presiding over different areas as well. Gotcha. Uh, just, um, God dividing angels to different territories. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, you know, to kind of bring it back down to earth here. Um, <laughs> I, but I think that was an important thing to, to discuss, you know. I, uh, yeah. the the Israelites don't pursue the Philistines all the way. They don't they don't destroy them, which is a little bit of a departure from, you know, sort of the what what we see a lot, especially in the period where they're actually moving into Canaan, is they tend to just utterly destroy people they come across. What do you think the reasoning is for not doing that to the Philistines? Uh, so. The other factor isn't everyone. There's normally a for it. If like, this group of people are coming to kill, if this group of people are attacking, uh, they'll normally be wiped out if they're directly attacking the children of God. But since the children of God aren't really where they need to be, uh, we've, we have them with uh, Eli's leader, right? And Eli has allowed the temple to fall apart. The temple is no longer holy office because of to do um and because of like effectively their influence they've now allowed the ark to get taken away mm -hmm. i don't think they're in a position for god to give them the blessing and be like yeah destroy your enemy so you're safe it's like no you have up big time yeah. in a lot of regards so uh they win this battle because you're not listening to me for it i think it's just the fact that the children of israel like aren't in a position to win so to speak to be fair, the Ar the Ark also took pretty good care of itself, so. Yeah, it's it's kind of like when it's people fine. talk about, like... <laughs> no, nothing's gonna happen to... <laughs> it, it's kind of like when people talk about how, like, human... How, how like, we're, we're killing the Earth and stuff, and it's yeah. like, the Earth is gonna be fine. Oh, yeah. We're not. Mm -hmm. Um, like... <laughs> you know, now the earth's gonna be great but we'll be gone like uh, are we perhaps um <laughs> but uh yeah and and so Take care of itself <laughs> <laughs> what's really interesting to me is that you know the covenant co the the ark comes back god gives samuel to go ahead to reclaim a lot of israel's lands but not really push into philistia and then he has all this great success and everything's going really well for israel and then everybody goes and they're like, hey, um, your your sons kind of suck now. So it seems like it's, you know, how do you end up in the system where e these judges are such bad fathers, you know? Like, that's that's something I think is interesting because Samuel's sons are, you know, they're ripping people off. They're br accepting bribes, you know, doing all sorts of stuff that they're not supposed to do. And the result is that the people come to God and they're or come to Samuel and they're like, Hey, can you just give us a King, like a, a person to rule over us? That's what all of the neighbors have. Like the neighbor kids have Kings. Why can't I have a King? Um, and Samuel's response is kind of like, you know, that he's a little insulted, <laughs> but like the, the, uh, the response that God has really interests me, which is that he goes to Samuel and he tells him not to be slighted, not to be upset with the people, because it's not him, it's not Samuel they're rejecting, it's God they're rejecting. And so Samuel kind of tries to tell people like, hey, this is not, you know, you're, you're, this is not me, I'm, I'm not the problem, I'm enforcing God's rules, humans are the problem here. And of course they're like, well, they're your kids, and he, he can't really have a rebuttal to that. But I think what, what you get here is very interesting because it informs the biblical narrative around human kings for the rest of the rest of time. This is the first time that there is a Jewish God ordained king and it's he's not he's not excited about it. He doesn't go to them and say, hey, this is a great idea. You know what? I don't need to worry about it anymore. I can kind of step back and chill. And a lot of the time when people ask the question, well, where, where's God now? Why doesn't God answer prayers as directly like all that? I think you can go and look through back through the Old Testament and see all these instances where pe the people chose other people over God. They chose other deities over God. So they kept demanding more and more earthly power. And as they keep doing that, you kind of see the divine power retreat from the world as God steps away and he gives more and more power to his children, but they're 
not doing a great job of it. And I think that the rela- the problem that you see with Eli and his sons and Samuel and his sons presents a pretty good bit of symbolism for that. That, yes, Eli is righteous, Samuel is righteous, but their children are not. And so it's the same as with God with us in that sense, is that, yes, we're, you know, God is righteous, God is just, his children are failing. So I think that that's something that a lot of people need to be very specific with in understanding the Bible is like, you know, they they look to a lot of what religious people have done in the past, what Jews, Christians, and Muslims have done in the name of their faith. And I think that there's there's a misunderstanding there about what the example is supposed to be versus how we actually behave. And this this story illustrates it really well. You know, you can have your literal father there to set an example and people will still screw up if if given the ability to, you know, I have broad scope questions Go about for that it. for another time, because it's, it's, it's touching on a lot of things you just said, but it's not related to this topic. <laughs> so maybe when we get the question time, okay. but I think there's some really good points there that we could expand upon. Put it in a super chat, thank God. <gasps> Pay yourself, man. <laughs> uh, with what? Anyway. That's crazy. You can ask those chances on the Lore Lodge YouTube channel. Go to the donations bar and donate. For- <laughs> <laughs> but really quickly, speaking of that, uh, this show is moving channels, and I think that's this is a good time to mention it. Yeah. Um, this show is going to continue. It's going to be monthly. It's going to be the last Tuesday of every month at 7 p.m. Eastern time, but it will be on the Weird Bible channel. Aiden, do you want to throw that link into the uh, the chat? Yeah, I'm going to pull it up first. It will be on the Weird Bible channel, which is the uh, youtube.com slash at the Weird Bible. If you look up the Weird Bible, you'll probably get to it, and I'll drop a link to it. Um, Aiden's going to drop a link in just a second yep. in the chat, but we'll, we'll do that. Um, so if you want to see these in the future, if you want to see replays, if you want to see the highlight reels, we're going to probably do, then go over there, subscribe to that. Make sure you're there because this show will be on that channel in the future. We will make sure to post a link to it for the next, you know, probably forever. Um, as long as this channel is the bigger channel, then we'll probably just consistently post the link to the next weird Bible podcast. Yeah. But that that's where it's going to be. It's got a new home. That channel is also going to have, if you've watched our similar, I, we both have similar content um, where it's going to be, it's going to have videos with uh, at the very least me, if Isaiah can pop in and do one with the schedule, then he'll do it too. I'm sure. But little Bible stories. So like a recorded edited version of the story of Jonah with visuals and maps and all that, yep. um, you know, same thing with, with David and Goliath, stuff like that. Little excerpts from the Bible where we'll go in depth about what's being, what's going on in a more recorded, you know, sit and, you know, take notes format rather than more of a discussion. But I wanted to make sure everybody knew about that. Again, it is The Weird Bible. That is the name of the channel. It is uh, youtube.com slash at The Weird Bible. And I think, Aiden, did you post a link? I posted a link. And I also love that when you go to The Weird Bible, when you scroll down, all of the partnered channels are just Isaiah's and ours. Yep. <laughs> all of them are just all of our different channels. Aw. <laughs> so cute yeah <laughs> no also oh i can't sign it's it like chat. we're friends <laughs> i'm gonna pop it in on uh on this side so oh can it. oh my gosh it's moving so fast okay there we go but yeah so i want to take that moment but go ahead ask your question now me yeah you had a question you said are we are we transitioning to question time no we're not just is it is it something you want to put in now or should we wait uh, let's wait because it's 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 more about a broad scope of like how humanity can regain their essentially relationship with God gotcha. on the whole. So, All right, yeah, we're yeah. definitely into that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the the experience that they have with being given a king is it starts off with a warning, um, and this you know kind of sets the stage for everything else that happens to them because they just get conquered a whole bunch of times after this. But I. Uh, they they want a king and they get a warning and the warning is that if if you are given a king he will take your sons and make them soldiers he will take your daughters and make them servants he will take the, your fields and give them to his favorite people uh he will take a tenth of your grain and wine he will take uh your servants and put them to work for his purposes he will take and he will take a tenth of your sheep uh, and he will also not remove them if you pray for their removal as he would with a judge or a prophet. So he's basically going and saying, if I give this earthly power over, someone is going to take things from you. So I look at this and the, you know, it essentially is just a warning about taxation. This is God literally going, if I give you a king, he will tax you. Quite, quite literally, he's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> based, based God? That, that, that 
It, that entire uh, message God gives is one of the most, I mean, there's several, but it's one of the more heartbreaking moments in the Bible. People to not do what they're about to do. Mm -hmm. It's just God giving them all, all of the terrible things. Like, he will take your sons for his armies. He will take your daughters for his wives. It's like this, if you want to be like all the other nations, I'll let you be like all the other nations, but this is what you're asking for. Uh, as, and as God says to Samuel, they have not rejected thee, they have rejected me. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, a, very, it's a very heavy chapter. Mm -hmm. You have no idea the floodgates you just opened up. <laughs> the amount of God-based hates taxes comments that are rolling through God right now is... Oh my God, there are a lot of God hates taxes. That would be a good shirt, too. Um, yeah. <laughs> God hates taxes. Yep. <laughs> hates taxes, oh just, my God. Just show up to the Westboro ba Baptist Church-style protests, and they have all their, like, really bad God hates signs, and ours is just, yep. like, God hates taxes. Yep. <laughs> That's how to get people taxes. back in church. Except that he does say, Jesus does say, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but I feel like that's more of a don't get yourselves killed for no reason comment. Um, well, to be fair, that happens way after this, and he's probably like, yeah, dad warned a, you guys. In a, like... in a greater sense, in a greater sense, that yeah. was more so saying don't, like, money does not matter yeah. in the kingdom of God. It's don't ruin, literally ruin your lives and your ability to witness over money. Yeah, uh, I agree. He's not... He's saying he's saying like don't be don't rebel against the system for the sake of rebelling. He's not so much being like you know what I like taxes. Why don't we do more of those? Yeah, <laughs> you're different. Good point. God hates the IRS. I'm loving the common God W uh, things in here. Well, where's um, hold up? I'm trying to find the exact verse. Uh, it's chapter eight. Um, yeah. Uh, he will take your sons. Uh, he will appoint captains of thousand fifties. Uh, he, your daughter will be confectioners and bakers. You sound uh, like you your sound fields like, uh, your vineyard, you're, you are you are not coming through right now. You're going in like it, it, you sound like a a robot yeah. having a stroke. I think you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna call you out. I think it's your internet because I've been dreaming the past few days and I haven't had an issue. I don't. You get right with God. Oh, <laughs> you get right with God. I don't know. We did this a couple weeks ago with Isaiah uh, Harris, and and he came through fine. Yeah, and we did it with uh, Ryan, his yeah. oh, no, daddy. Yeah, we did it last weekend about, too. Mm, talking mm, about. Mm. You should you should just pray about it. All right, pray pray about. new <laughs> new GoFundMe to get uh to get Isaiah um Comcast internet. Wait, I think I think that's better good, than cry good, about it. Good pray luck. Hey, I have literally. But yeah, I've quite literally called like E County multiple times. Like, can, we, can I get fiber optic? And they're like, no, <laughs> you don't. You're not good enough for it. <laughs> Welcome to rural Tennessee. Uh, you're gonna have to move to Knoxville or Nashville. <laughs> yeah, that, that would suck for my dead mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I it was like, I would rather be alone in the Smokies, yeah, in right. a cave. <laughs> I will broadcast I'll, via I'll, Morse code I'll if I have to. The YouTube channel. <laughs> oh hey, if Osama bin Laden can get that video out from the middle of Iraq, my message to the West, oh. then I can get my videos up. Okay. Oh my god. Valid. Right, anyway, That's a fair um, point. Uh, but I think this leads us perfectly into kind of the, the last thing I want to touch on tonight, because next next episode we'll we'll really get into the rise of King David. But I wanted to set the stage for David so that it really makes sense, because otherwise I think yeah, I think this would have made no sense to people. Um, it might have made a little bit of sense, but there's no background. Um, the year we're looking at here, by the way, is the the late 10th century or late 11th century BC. So, to to give you an idea of what the world looks like, the last 200 years, essentially the last 160 years, have been a dark age. The Egyptian Empire has collapsed. The Hittite Empire has collapsed. The Assyrians and the Babylonians have yet to come. You've got some people hanging out up in, in Phrygia. You've got some Greeks. You've got, you know, basically these kingdoms, but they've, they've shrunk considerably from their size during the Bronze Age. So Canaan, Israel, uh, Philistia, all these places, they're kind of in a state of flux. They had imperial overlords. They no longer do. So you've got a smattering of petty kings and city-states. And then you've got the, the Israelites living in their villages and towns and, and nomadic structures. They've got a permanent tabernacle set up uh, in 
Tabernacle? Tabernacle? I don't know. Tabernacle, yeah. Yeah. They've got that set up permanently in Shiloh for now, but eventually it will move to Jerusalem. Hmm. We'll get to that next time. Um, <laughs> there is not There is not a structure right now in the world. The empires really don't even border each other. You've got the imperial centers of power and then a bunch of city-states between them. If you've ever played the game Civilization, you might understand what this is like, where you kind of all start spread out, and then eventually you get buffer states and whatnot. So that's kind of where we are right now. But the Jews ask for a king. And God comes to Samuel, and he's like, I will anoint someone, and you will know when it happens. Um, and he, he comes to Samuel, and he, he tells him about this Benjamite that's going to come. Benjamin. Tribe of Benjamin. Do you want to explain? You probably know more than I do. Yeah, so, so there were uh, different... So the 12 tribes of Israel were each named after the 12 different houses uh, or the 12 different sons of uh, Isaac. Mm -hmm. So there was... There's tribe of Benjamin, tribe of Reuben, tribe of Judah. Um, for at least during this time had their own place within the uh, the office of God or within the nation. Mm -hmm. Benjamites were a... I forget what their role was. Uh, They're the smallest of the tribes. Remember, do you have the answer to that? I, I, don't, have a, tribes, I don't have their specific yeah. role. What uh, I know is that they're the smallest, and they are one of the... Eventually, they're the only one to join Judah. The rest of Israel goes off and does its own thing yeah. in the north, and Benjamin is the only tribe that joins Judah other than yeah, uh, so I, can't, I can't remember what their function is but yeah yeah so so the benjamites were kind of a little bit to the side of everything else that's happening like aiden said they were the smallest um and uh, effectively god says all right if the people want a king i'll give them a king but there's a lot of misconceptions about this king um a lot of people feel like the reason things happen the way they happen is because God was smacking the people of Israel like, oh, you want a king? I'll give you a king. And he gives them a purposefully bad one. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. No. Whenever we first meet this person, it is a righteous man. He is a holy man. Um, who eventually, power corrupts. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, God did give them an earnest and righteous king. And from our introduction to him, he is a righteous man. It's not until years later that things start to go bad. Yeah. They, they give him, I mean, Saul is introduced to us as the son of a Benjamite named Kish. Um, and we're immediately told the first thing we learn about Saul, the very first thing, is that he's really tall and good looking. <laughs> he, is, he is the tallest man in Israel. He is the most power, handsome man yeah. in Israel. So it, he's introduced to us as being really, really beautiful. And then he's also a good servant of his father. He's obedient. He is dedicated. And the very first story we get about Saul is it's actually kind of cinematic almost. Like, I, I read this and I'm like, I, I see this, this scene of God speaking to Samuel and being, you know, he will do this to you and he will do that to you. And you've got this, like, you know, I, I could see the, the in my brain, the, the montage of kings doing horrible things to their people as Samuel is being having this explained to him and as he's explaining it to the people. And then that kind of soft cut to just two dudes wandering in the desert looking for donkeys. Um, because that's what they do. They're on a mission. They're, his dad was like, I lost some donkeys. I need you to go find them. So Saul and his servant, who remains unnamed, go out into the wilderness. They're looking around. And they can't find the donkeys. And eventually you've got kind of a Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure moment where he's like, dude, these donkeys are nowhere to be found. We should go back. Um... I'm sure it didn't sound like that. It was probably in, you know, Hebrew. But uh, the, so the servant's like, hey, I've heard there's a holy man. <laughs> Isaiah's not happy with me. It's just, it's just, I hate you. <laughs> I was just really wishing I knew Saul Hebrew. And like say that. Saul and servants, excellent investor. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, why does this keep oh. popping up? Uh, but yeah, so his servant goes, hey, you know, I've heard of this holy man. I've heard of a seer. And he's, he's in this city, you know, can we, can we, why don't we go ask him? And Saul goes, well, what do we, we don't have anything to bring him. We're out of bread. We're out of wine. Like we have nothing to give him. And the servant goes, aha, I have a quarter. Literally. He says, I have a quarter of a silver shekel. And they're like, that's good enough. Let's go meet this, this holy man. They go, they ask some women who are doing some laundry in the river, you know, Hey, have you, have you heard of the holy man? 
Um, they say, yes, he's up in the high place. In the, they're, they're actually waiting for him right now. He needs to bless the food. Uh, so as they're walking up, Samuel is coming down. And he sees them, and he walks up to them, and they're like, ah, can you help us find our sheep? And he goes, I'm inviting you to dinner. Because the night before, God had appeared to him and said, a, a man of the tribe of Benjamin is approaching. He is the anointed one. He will be king. And Samuel just kind of goes, okay. <laughs> Samuel has learned his lesson. He does not question God. I was going to say, that's the correct response when God says <laughs> something's Sam happening. Sam Samuel sticks to, like, you see it more as you get into the story of David, but Samuel is the man who knows his lane. He knows exactly what he's supposed <laughs> to be doing. Shows up at this random town and... and it's like, hey, you're gonna see a Benjamin, a Benjamite tomorrow. He's gonna walk up to you, and that that's the guy. And so like, all right, so he's walking outside, and and Saul's like climbing up the mountain. He's like, hello, sir. I am looking for my sheep. Can you help me? And Samuel's like, we're gonna eat dinner later, and just walks off. Yep. <laughs> he's like, come on up, come on. You know, like, we're having dinner in twenty minutes. Come up, sit next to me, hang out. You and your servant both. You got this. And and I think it needs to be put into context samuel or saul is like i am the youngest son of the worst family in the smallest tribe and and samuel's like yep you you're the guy you're which the guy. this this is mirrored later <laughs> this is mirrored later i'm not questioning it you're the guy yep it's it is. Yep. you see it again because who is jesus he's the son of a carpenter a stonemason, possibly, like, you know, the term is, is more general back then. He's the son of a guy who builds stuff from some backwater. Like, Nazareth is not a is, is not a, a cosmopolitan area. He's from a low-born family. He has no connection to nobility. And he's the one that's, that is the son of God later on in the story. So you see all of these parallels start to develop really early. That the character of Jesus later on is... You know, you get little bits and pieces of him. You get bits of pieces like Saul, David, you know, all of these things that kind of collect over time. But it is funny, that moment where Samuel's just like, yeah, come have dinner with me. You know, you sit right next to me at the seat of honor. Yep. And, know, and then yeah, you're the guy. That's it. My favorite, my favorite is the power move here oh, where they, I love it. <laughs> they sit down and there's about 30 people there. And he beckons over to the server and he's like, bring the portion I had you save. And Saul's like, the what? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I saved you some thigh. It doesn't say what the thigh is from. But probably like probably goat. beef. Beef, goat, yeah. sheep. Um, probably Philistine. Probably <laughs> Philistine. Okay. I mean, what was it, 50,000? Isaiah's going to have to make an apology video for claiming that, that, uh, that was the Jews joke. were cannibals. That was uh. a joke. That was a joke. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Just Saul. Uh. <laughs> uh, I mean, you do have the apology video for killing three to five children, so... Uh. Yeah, I've got that one in the belt for whenever that becomes a timely thing. I, 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 I still don't know the story behind that. <laughs> I, I'm sure that the, the neither, story man. behind this is going to be Wendigoon claims that Saul was the first Wendigo. Oh, God. That's... Uh, uh, that tracks for a lot of this time. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, so, you know, he, he brings him up, and that is about as far as I got in my notes. Uh, so do you want to explain how Saul becomes king? How far, how far up do you want me to go? I guess just, just, with, just from, with the from here to when he's Saul. actually crowned, I guess. Okay, so after this, uh, he is effectively uh, conveys to Saul, and it says... Um, uh, it's, it's at the end of chapter 9 what you were looking at where it says um, essentially bids the servant to Saul and then says then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said it is not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance thou art departed from me today thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sepulcher in the border of Benjamin at Belza and they will say unto thee the assets which thou seekest are found so it's a picture that after like, Saul, again, set out on this journey to find uh, the donkeys that went missing, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's, um, it, it, in spite of what's happening being way bigger than these donkeys going missing, this guy is going to be king of Israel. Uh, Samuel anoints him as king, and then says, if you go back to the border, there's going to be two men who have found the donkeys, mm -hmm. effectively. Uh, so it's like, it's God's taking care of his, like, his not important concerns that are big to him, mm -hmm. while also saying, hey, you're going to be king over the nation. Um 
and and from there it says uh jump go into the plane you'll go to taber um he gives him instructions for how he's to meet them in um then it says that at this time, whenever you go to the high place, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you, which was a very unique and special occasion at the time. It was quite literally God coming upon you. <laughs> you able to speak divine words through him is effectively prophecy. Um, and he, he gives, uh, he tells him that he's to go give burnt offerings to uh, speak to God directly, to ask for his guidance. Um, what I like about this part so much, whenever he's describing all this to Samuel I'm sorry, describing all of it to Saul, is that Saul is very humble whenever this is all happening. Like like you said, he's like, I am the youngest child from the smallest tribe of the worst family. Like, how would you want, how does God want me to be king? Saul continues to keep that spirit. Again, this goes in contrast to what a lot of people believe. Saul was kind of gotcha, that God the people of Israel. That's not at all. Um, He's frozen. Well, yes. I brought up Israel out of Egypt. Oh, you hear me? You, you, you thought for a moment here. You've thought, yeah. Um. <laughs> All right, cool. You, you said, Yay, uh, we made it. You said something um, along the lines of uh, everyone has the misconception that Saul was a bad guy, and you know, in in reality, that's that's not quite the case. Yeah, he he maintained his humility. Mm -hmm. Well, for a while, uh, he maintained his humility beginning of his kingship and god yeah. did mean for israel to have a good king uh, he he said a judge was better but if they want a king he's not going to purposefully punish them he said it's a bad idea but he'll give them a king um and saul for a while was a righteous king it says whenever it comes to his anointing that um it go he goes to the people of israel um you've rejected your god which they did the the reason they wanted a king is because they didn't want god to be their king um, and have said, nay, said king, now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribe, by your thousands, and he hopes to come together, um, as all the families come together, and it says, and the family of Matri was taken, and Saul the son of Kish was taken, and when they sought him, he could not be found. So whenever they go to get Saul, he is, he, Samuel has gathered together all the people, all the important families to say, this is your king. And whenever they he gets to Saul's family, they're like, yeah, we don't know where he's at. <laughs> Literally can't find Saul. So it says, uh, therefore, they inquired of the Lord further, if the man should yet come thither. And the Lord answered, behold, he hath hidden himself among the stuff. Quite literally. <laughs> when it comes time for Saul to be anointed, he's hiding. <laughs> doesn't want it he, he can't do it he's scared it says and they ran and fetched him thence when he stood among the people he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward samuel said to all the people see ye him whom the lord hath chosen that there is none like him among the people all the people shouted and said god save the king also this verse is where the brits get it so Gotcha. So they're not original. They got it from the Jews. Uh, oh. Then Samuel told the people, gotcha. "The wait, wait, wait! You're telling me the British stole something from the Middle East? <laughs> what? No, <laughs> never. <laughs> Take it back." <laughs> Shocked. Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom, wrote it in a book, and laid it up before the Lord. Um, and Samuel sent every man away to his house. And Saul also went home to Gibeah. There with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. The children of Bilal said, How shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no presents, but he held his peace. Mm -hmm. The children of Belial were effectively referred to the mischiefer. Belial is uh, related to not serving God. It's, it's serving false gods. So often used as another term for Satan. Him. Go ahead. It's often used as another term for Satan as well in, in later so, so, works. Yeah, the, the effective people of the kingdom who were mischievous, uh, it says that they didn't they didn't want to be king. They said, who is this man? It says that Saul didn't care. So what we see from Saul in the beginning is that he was a man who was very humble. Whenever it came time to be king, he didn't even want to be king. He was mm -hmm. quite literally hiding. At, uh, whenever he was crowned king, first thing he does is go back home. Yep. Go back with his family. <laughs> that certain people of the tribe hated him. Uh, but he doesn't care. Like, mm. th this is something that's been put upon him. And in the following chapters, we see him rise to the rank of king and for a while be a very good king of Israel. 
happen. Uh, but for now, he's he's a good king <laughs> to have in the role. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting is the physical contrast. You mentioned that Jesus was a parallel to Saul and that he was from a lowly class or a lowly descent, so to speak. Well, at the same place, so was Daniel. He was the youngest son of Jesse. Jesse was simply a shepherd, uh, not someone of high esteem. Uh, but what's interesting, while, the, while Saul and David share that, their physical characteristics are complete opposite. Oh, yeah. David uh, Saul small. is this tall, towering man. David is a very short man, like short, scraggly hair. They're completely different statures, uh, which makes an interesting dualism between the two. Um, but he also comes from a lowly class. But again, at the beginning, where we're at now, Saul is a good king. He is a humble king, and he's one who seeks after God. Uh, and if we end the story right there, that's it. That, that's it. Happy ending. Nothing bad happens, and Saul <laughs> definitely doesn't misuse his power in any way. We definitely won't talk about that in a month. <laughs> we, we will not go Fresh. into all the many ways that Saul proceeds to screw up. Um, but with that, yeah. I think this is a good time um, to switch over to questions. I think um, so. And, uh, and while you get those pulled up, I am going to run for the, the restroom. Sounds good. Yeah, we've got quite a number of them, just as a forewarning. <laughs> While he's gone, while he's gone, did we get him admitted to that nursing home yet? Oh, we're still live. Oh, sorry, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 you're good, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll we'll chat about yeah, that it's... offline. It's uh, there's there's there's, <laughs> there's some contract stuff I need your help with. Uh, anyway, um, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, a right to attorney and all that privilege. Yeah, of power. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just you know we need a couple signatures, then we'll be good to go. We'll be fine. Um. Yeah, the first the first super chat was directed towards you about the the chosen show. Uh, the second part of that that I don't think we read earlier was uh, it's from Anderson. They said, uh, "Bet twenty bucks he'll cry the first episode." What do you think? What do you what do you think the odds are on that? Probably. Yeah. It has to do if it has to do with Christ. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't. I should do Paradise Regained. Is I'm like I'm gonna be a blubbered mess. Uh. I, I can't, like, describe... I'll have conversations with friends just casually be like, oh, yeah, well, that's the sin debt. That's why Christ died for me. And it's, it's just like, it's like, and tears. Like, yep. I, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you're probably right. Here's your $20. <laughs> that's an easy bet. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to we're gonna have a, our own version of FanDuel. It's going to be called uh, uh, Bible Bets. And <laughs> it'll be... It'll be how frequently, <laughs> how frequently we cry at the love of Christ. <laughs> oh, that's probably gonna that that's don't, I don't know where that lands on the list of reasons why I'm probably going to hell for Bible bet. What what a what a fantastic title! Bible <laughs> bets. I'm sure. Yeah. It's audio of you saying that now. That that's the thing that we're gonna be doing. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's gonna be bad. I gotta say, it really is entertaining how for some reason your audio will come through fine and then there will be moments where it seems like your signal has gone through a paper shredder it's really just kind of entertaining <laughs> and he's back yeah. <laughs> I have all right uh hey, we've we, I, I've, there's another reason i'm going to hell i've established uh, a new gambling uh platform called bible bets and it's going to be where people can go and place bets on how quickly Isaiah is going to start crying at the love of Jesus Christ. I am going to get my gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? No, where's there a plastic bag that's better for this? Um, how? How? Oh, I don't know. I give up. My my computer refuses to go to sleep. Yeah, uh, the other one. Oh boy! All right, so you want to? We got a lot of these. So we do. Uh, yeah, uh, we covered the first one, which is how Bible okay. bets got started. Uh, the second one is uh, from Newman Borders for ten dollars, saying, first time in a live. Just wanted to say I love your content. Enjoy the money. Much love from Indiana. Heart. Oh well, thank you. Uh, All. Uh, Ender Bro for one ninety nine says, are you guys fans of the Dark Souls games? I have never played them. Have you? Probably no. Uh... I, I wanted to play a lot of games before I started YouTube, and now I just, uh, nope. Uh, <laughs> yep. Isaiah likes but, to play yeah, the Sims I, and I put them in, uh, them you know, way. problems. Yep. What? I said you like to... <laughs> <laughs> I said I said you like to play the Sims and put them into predicaments. <laughs> like... 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. You put you put a sim in a pool and I take away the ladder. I the Sims either. Surprisingly, it's yeah, it's I a weird game. It's fun, but it's a weird game. Virtually, virtually. <laughs> but from every my girlfriend used to play, and she's like, "Yeah, you can just murder families." I'm like, "Oh, that's nice." Um, <laughs> that that's mm -hmm. it. That's all I know about the game. Uh, I, like, I'll probably play a lot of those from software games eventually. I want to play like Elden Ring and stuff one day. One day, uh, but we'll see. Time will tell. Uh, what? Is he making noises? Yeah, he wants to come up again. Okay, well, hey, you know. baby boy. Uh, Nick Highlander for five dollars said, "I'm curious if y'all heard of the giants of Aztec mythology in Queen of Metzen." Uh, Queen of Metzen. Queen of Metzen. Yeah. I personally have not, but now that you mention it, I'm probably gonna look into it. Yeah. Isaiah, I mean, as we know, Isaiah loves giants. I do love my giants. Uh, yeah, they're just, a, the only thing I know about. I don't know anything about them specifically. I just remember. I was going down the giant's rabbit hole that that was further evidence of them being a part of every culture. Mm -hmm. um, I, just my knowledge of them is they have giants also. So yeah, everyone's sure got cool giants. And there's specific lore with them. I just but yeah. everyone's got giants. Wonder why that is. That's weird. I wonder. I wonder where <laughs> that's if weird. There's definitely a... coincidence and nothing else. No, yeah, there's definitely not a unifying theory that someone or multiple people at this call have to explain that one. Yeah. All right. Next, we got There's we got a lot of these to get through. Uh, several evidence of a single origin of all religions and communities <laughs> in the world. Well, no, no, ahead, that's sorry. impossible. Uh, young Bolio for twenty dollars <laughs> said, "I will donate ten million Russian rubles if you guys make a music video teaching us how to riz up Jesus Christ." I'm not taking that. I don't think. I don't <laughs> yeah, think that yeah, many that's rubles you, is worth my blasphemy. <laughs> I. I don't think that, that will pay off whatever yeah, debt I, I will incur by making that video. Uh, so. <laughs> gonna decline uh, that offer. Tell you, my man. <laughs> Sean for four ninety nine says, uh, "What is?" Let Thornberry take it along with Bible bets. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I'm going to hell already anyway, so I might as well have fun on the ride. Uh, US four 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 ninety nine said, uh, "Wendy has talked before about God walking with us in Eden. Could you point to me the specific verses you're talking about? Love the content, lads." Thank you. Thanks. Your breath is stinky. Oh, yeah, he's got terrible breath. Yep. Two separate things, like God walks and God eats. What? Um, I could probably, like, I know, like, the areas. <laughs> what? But for God in... No, no. Oh, he... Yeah, yeah, no, uh, Isaiah, it's, it's uh, God walking with us and eating, not God walking with us and eat. Okay, thought he said uh, and eating. I was no. like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. He's asking about uh, about the uh, specific instances in which God walked with man. Specifically yeah. Eden. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 gotcha, gotcha. All right, that'd be right here in... But now I'm uh, curious, does chapter... God eat? Is that what you were referring to? Well, Jesus did, but okay, I yeah. don't think there's a mention of God. When I heard that, I'm like, yeah, Jesus did, if that's what he means. Uh there's also, like, there's other mentions of God walking with man, like God walked with Enoch and stuff, but the mention of it in here, and he formed man of the dust of the ground, uh, made the tree of life, and the river, and the poison, and gold, and the name of the second river, and the name of the third. You can go on to the next question while I'm just going through Genesis. Sounds good. Okay. I just reloaded the page. Uh, yeah, we got a little bit. Yep. Uh, I don't think that one's really applicable. So, uh, it, huh? Ash STR just said ASL. I don't think this is an Omegle, dude. Uh, <laughs> um, Pumpkin Bear for seven for one and nine said, uh, "In Sunday school, we calculated a Goliath's height." I'm curious what you calculated that it was. Yep, I want to know. Uh, Lachlan three, it seems, uh, for five dollars said, "Love you guys' content. Winning against Paradise Lost video is my favorite YouTube video I've ever seen. God bless y'all." Thank you. Aw. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That means a lot. I don't know if that turned out, even though I cried a lot in it. That's, that's very kind. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Ender Bro for 999 said, Never stop doing you. Love all of you guys. Aw, oh, thank you. Not a red coat for $20 said, I was watching your previous weird Bible episodes, and I was wondering if you had ever heard of the author Frank E. Peretti. 
He has a few books that cover things like demons and giants from a Christian perspective. The name sounds familiar. I haven't read anything by him, though. Most, most of my reading on the subject has been Dr. Michael Heiser. I think Isaiah is still trying to find the, yeah, uh, yeah, I think the so. verse. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm still skimming through, but no, but no, I have not read any of his works. This is I don't know him either. I'm just, I, I said that very assertively to catch up, not because, no, I will not read any. I didn't mean it like my bad. Yes. <laughs> All good. Uh, Nerd Hill Productions for $5 said, I heard an interesting explanation of the Trinity where it is mirrored in our own design in the way mind, body, and soul are three in one. Thoughts? I mean, I wouldn't call it a biblical thing, but yeah, I don't think you're totally wrong. It's a three is very is a divine number with a lot of the stuff God does in the Bible. Um, I mean, you could make some reference between like, oh, what we do physically, what we do mentally and spiritually, uh, but at the same time, the reason God is the Trinity is more for us, more so for our understanding of what God is. Uh, rather than God needs to be three people, so to speak, uh, it's more so that God is both the 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 ruler, the comforter, the provider, what have mm -hmm. you. Um, it's not so much that God has to be separated into three groups, but yeah, I mean, if you want to make an interesting algae off of it, you certainly could. Mm -hmm. The the Trinity as a concept is is hard to grasp and explain. It's I I, I still don't know that I could do it properly. <laughs> I mean, God, God is, it's, yeah, no, I can't. <laughs> I'd need to sit down and write out my thoughts before I could really go into that. At the end of the day, effectively, it's that God is all parts of the Trinity. He is the Holy Spirit that dwells in us personally. He is the creator and ruler of the universe. And he is also the, uh, the provider and the direct, um, the direct intermediate for man. God, God is all of these things. And yeah. he is in physically in three parts, not just whenever Jesus was on earth. It mentions that Christ makes intercession for man to God on the throne, mm -hmm. but Christ and God are simultaneously one. Mm -hmm. and I don't believe that God needs to be in three pieces. I mean, God's om omnipowerful. Like, there's no way you need to, you know, be three separate people. But I think it's done for us because in the Trinity, God is the Godhead. Um, he is loving Jesus who died for us on the cross and this God who rolls the heavens and the earth. Um, I, I think, again, I think the reason the Trinity is the way this force um, and for our better understanding, I think that has to be. Gotcha. My in belief. All right. Cool. Um, uh, the other Korean for $10 said, based podcast, happy to see both Aiden's back on Weird Bible again. Glad I could catch it live. It's always uplifting to hear biblical discussion. Question. Old Testament figure with the best KD ratio? I mean, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other than God. You're going to say that. Um, David collected a lot of Visual force or commander? Yeah, it's, that's the thing. Is like, uh, as an individual or as a... It says... Well, well... They say figure. If we're gonna say as, if we're gonna say as like a commander, Joshua and David are up there. Mm -hmm. If we're talking individual, like mano a mano, uh, Samson. Oh Samson. yes, I himself. Like when when David collected the foreskins, that was still him and some of yeah, his men, right. and they collected two hundred. Uh, Samson in one day slaughtered three thousand, I think. <clears throat> I have not read the story of that. Samson since I was a child. <laughs> I don't remember that bit being people, in the Sunday man. school version. <laughs> I have to go back and yeah, read that now. Yeah, the jawbone of a donkey. He just, he just found like a donkey skull and broke it in half. And he's like, here we go. And he slaughtered thousands of people. Just dual wielding donkey skull shards. That's like multiple people a minute. All right. Anyway. Um... Freebird was playing. Yeah, it had to have been on repeat, just looped, just the solo. Yep, just over and over. <laughs> I hate, I hate you so much. I hate you so much. Oh my word. Uh, Squirrel Boy for twenty dollars said, "I'm very new to the faith, and these weird Bible episodes, as well as videos from your respective channels, has only strengthened that feeling. 
What advice would you have for someone who is new and or uncertain of their faith? Uh, cite basically any conversation I've had with Aiden. Never in the past two ask years. a conservative Christian anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> and when i say conservative christian i don't mean republicans i mean like people mm -hmm. who are like you know anybody well, was, anybody well, who sins at Genesis. all what is going to hell what it was uh what advice would you give to somebody well, who's well, new to the, the faith yeah yeah new or uncertain of the faith what would you offer as advice uh, the, my, my best advice would be to uh, seek God directly, seek the yeah. Bible directly in what you ask, and um, uh, your understanding comes through that, or someone you trust, someone who you truly believe has your best interest in heart and the best interest of the Bible and of interpreting the Word as you help yourself study. But, like, at, no matter what you do, taking it through someone else as a filter-down opinion, yeah. the Bible is pretty direct in what it says. Yeah, I, I would recommend read the book for yourself, read some commentaries, and then when you've got questions, you know, ne never take what one person says about it. Try Ask a whole bunch of people if you've got access to multiple dominations. If you've got a really burning question, go and ask an Orthodox priest and a Methodist pastor and, a, you know, a Baptist, you know. Go and ask a few different people what their opinions on the topic are and see what they come up with. And, you know, that way you've got a, a number of influences, suggestions. You're not just listening to what one person says. A large part of the problem with people understanding Christianity comes from the fact that they have a kind of a bubble. And that can be a very progressive bubble. It can be a very conservative bubble. Often the, the best way to get in touch with your faith is to look outside of that and to not, you know allow yourself to get trapped within one community of faith. Ex remember, the church is, is all of us. The church is all Christians. So you don't want to get stuck in your small town Baptist church and then, you know, the next time you meet somebody be like, ah, well, what my pastor said is what it's different. So I'm right and you're wrong. You know, discussion is probably the best way to, to strengthen faith. And that's part of why I love these podcasts. love doing it with Isaiah is that we get to sit here and talk and debate sometimes. And sometimes it's just a discussion. You know, we, we get to really flesh things out. And I think that's the best way to do it is, and, and honestly, what I would say is find a group of friends who are also interested and sit there and read the Bible together, pick a passage, give yourselves a week, you know, say you're going to do the, the, uh, you know, first Kings and everybody reads it, you take notes and then you meet up and you say, all right, what do we think of this? Yeah. That's, that's probably the best way to do it is a group Bible study in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I, I speaking as someone who's kind of like fallen off the wagon of religion in a lot of my life, the, someone born and raised Catholic, but for a number of reasons fell off that and uh, is like, you know, gotten back into it a little bit as I've gotten older. Uh, part of the reason that I enjoy being on this show is primarily for what, it, what Aiden was just saying is, you know, being a part of these discussions with people who know more than you and just getting to explore these things that a I haven't explored in a long time since certain aspects of high school and way beyond that. And also just in ways that uh, have never been explored. That's why the weird Bible thing is so fun is because these are topics that have that we're doing deep dives on that I've never some of them I've never covered in general and some of them obviously never to this extent. So, you know, if you can do this in your own life, uh, highly recommended. I mean, faith is a constant learning experience. That's really what it is, is that you, you always have something to learn. Yep. The other thing I thought of that uh, is important to mention is that whenever you read the Bible, if you are looking for doctrine and to live your life now, just look at the New Testament. Uh, there's a lot of confusion, especially for Christians. They'll see this from the New Testament. A lot of the Old Testament is very good, and you know, there's moral sense to be learned. The rules God gives the people or his followers in the New Testament are no longer applicable. You're aware, stuff like that. That was rules for then, before the covenant was destroyed, whenever Christ came to earth. So if you're looking for doctrine for how to live your life, the stories of the Old Testament are very important, but the New Testament, whenever Christ gives his words to the church, that's what we're to follow now. Yes. So listen to what Jesus said rather than what the prophet said for how to live, yeah. Right, yes. I, I wouldn't, yeah, okay, cool. That made sense. Yeah. There, there was a bit where you broke up and I was like, I might need uh, to reiterate some of that, but you're good. You're good. Yep, you, you got, got it. it. You came through. You came okay, through. Cool, cool. Uh, Joe for four ninety nine. So I found the verse. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sweet. Found the verse. You found the verse. Okay. Uh, Genesis 3, 8. It says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And it's from the presence of the Lord God amongst the tree of the garden. So combining that, the idea that they had heard God coming decided to hide and the fact that in later parts of the bible it says that god sought 
uh, companionship with man when he created them. It, every other time that they see a divine figure after this, they're like afraid and shocked. But here it says they heard God's voice walking through the garden. Mm -hmm. uh, and God seeking companionship implies that he created them and knew what God sounded like and blah, blah, blah. The Genesis 3 8 is what a lot of people point to yeah. for the actual verse of him walking through the garden. Yes. There. Right. That's right. Uh, Joe for 499 said, Hey guys, I want to uh, say to you guys have reignited my faith and I'm getting baptized this year. Love from San Antonio. Oh, Joe, that's awesome. I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. Yeah. Very cool. Congratulations. Congrats. That's yep. why we do it. <laughs> Young Volio for $10 said, Do you lust for the watermelon, Jonah? I don't think lust was the thing he was feeling. <laughs> uh... You you started this. You Pity for the gourd, lust for the melon. And yep. Oh, it's, yeah, now it's becoming a thing. How far can we push it to make it sound like the original thing? Yeah. Yep. Uh, for the melon is your fault. <laughs> Forget it. Condolences for the squash. <laughs> mourn for, mourn for the corn. Yeah, keep reading. Mourn for the corn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, I've been, go to the bird. Go to the next one. <laughs> go to the next uh, one. Ben Krenijek for $10 said, Speaking of pity for the gourd, I've just received the hoodie and I'm wearing it while watching this. Oh, awesome. So Aren't they comfy? At least it's benefiting somebody. Aren't those really comfy? <laughs> if you want a pity for the gourd hoodie, you can go to uh, thelorelodge.shop and get yourself a pity for the gourd hoodie. Pity for the gourd. If you use the code gourd, you will get 10% off. Uh, Scholars of Strange for $20 said, Good evening, gentlemen. Just wanted to pop in and say that this podcast series has reinforced my faith in being a Christian, so simply thank you. Wendigo and I have now watched your Conspiracy Iceberg in total seven times. Very, very well done. The whole one? Oh. That is 70 hours, that sir. Times. That counting in editing and all. Wow. That's impressive. Thank you. You're very cool. I much appreciate the ad revenue. <laughs> <laughs> That's God, that video. Man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> One full watch through of that video probably makes you like 20 grand. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's how, you know, that's how views work on YouTube. Yeah, it's yeah. Like $10 a view, right? My guy. <laughs> yeah. I, I was talking CPM to CPM of $10,000. call with some other YouTubers. Mm hmm. I was in a call with some other YouTubers the other day, and one guy who wasn't a YouTuber about like what's kind of cpm have you been getting this month and i'm like I said something like i've been getting like 12 to 15 and um I'm like that's pretty good and then uh, it was quiet for a minute and the guy who doesn't do youtube goes a view and i'm like no <laughs> not 15 dollars a view did you what imagine you? i wish I, hey this video went viral i've crashed the economy <laughs> one video <laughs> oh don't we wish when to goon apologizes for crashing the economy video yeah. coming soon Oh. I wouldn't apologize for that. I'd be um, <laughs> I'd be quite through. I need to stop talking. Keep reading quite Based. <laughs> Based. Uh, Raffle Chief McJoffle Chief for $5 said, Hey, y'all, thank you so much for doing this. I'm generally a shitpost account, but I have some genuine <laughs> questions for you. I'll post them as follows. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, there's, yeah, there's a few. three of them. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, but before then, thank Nick, you. Nick's Highlander for $2 said, I heard the Palestinians are sea people. The pet. The, the Philistines got it. Um, Philistines, I'd imagine. Yeah, but. there's that. That's the thing is is one suggestion is that they're the Sea Peoples. One suggestion is that they were displaced by the Sea Peoples. Uh, there's the suggestion that they came over because of eruptions in the Aegean. Um, early, early Babylonians. Yeah, they, it's hard to tell, especially because the term Philistine is used in the Bible to refer to things during the time of Abraham, and. As far as we know, a Philistine culture did not exist in Canaan during the time of Abraham. So it seems like the they may be referring to a location. The Philistines, they, they might be thinking of Philistines as people who live in Philistia, uh, not necessarily one singular group of people when they're talking about them uh, in Genesis. But by the time you get to, um, you know, Exodus and Numbers and all that, that would probably be Aegean, like Mycenaean Greeks, maybe. We don't know though. There's, it's really hard to tell. We don't even know who the sea people were. We have some ideas, like that they might have been from like Sardinia, but I, I think that was more of a me so question. Really yeah, no, I wasn't sure if you wanted to add anything. That's, it's a history question. Yeah, that 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 no, that was that was that was a very Matt, that was very Mr. Mattis question. Yeah. Uh, but they get wiped out eventually, so it's gone. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, the gourd for five dollars said, "Dost thou pity the ivy?" No, only the gourd. Only the gourd is worthy of pity. His name's the gourd. He made his YouTube channel name the gourd. Yeah, and it's a picture of a gourd as well. It is a profile picture. Archie, why are you licking the table? Oh yeah, look at what we've done. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna send us a giant mm, gourd in the oh, mail. We should. Uh, so we're entering the Raffle Chief, Raffle Chief McJaffle Chief series of questions here just to just to give you some heads up uh the first one awful is chief like a awful chief series of questions. oh yeah oh yeah uh question one who slash what is lilith what do you know about her in a concrete sense uh so the term lilith shows up it kind of shows up uh in the old testament in i cannot remember which book but isaiah. basically what it's what is it isaiah yeah and it mentions the the lilith too the lilith okay, yeah. the lilith's the term Lilith actually seems to refer to a screech owl, um, etymologically. So the belief is that it was that's that that line is probably in reference to a place with certain specific kinds of animals, um, or it may mean monstrous things, which would still be referring to animals. As far as Lilith in a Adam's first wife sense, that comes from the I want to say the Apology of Ben Sirah. I think. Sounds right. It's around that time, yeah. Yeah, which is much, much, much later. I think it's like 6th century AD. Um, so Lilith in the Old Testament, not a figure. A hundred years later, someone was like, what if there was <laughs> another Eve? Hmm? And what if it's the name of this monster thing that Isaiah mentions in a very abstract section about prophecy? Hmm? Have we ever considered that? See, yeah, just... Lil Lilith stuff is sense and like if you read the bible it's pretty clear that like that there's no place that could be inserted in within the story yeah. people just added it later to be quirky i guess yeah yeah i mean you, you get all sorts of mystic texts and stuff over time but there's there's nothing in the old testament that suggests and there's and more importantly there's nothing in the actual documents from before uh the ben Sirah work that that mention any of this so there's there's no lilith in the old testament as a character yet cool uh, his next question is, I don't question God, but I do question if he wants to help me in particular. Is that blasphemy? It's not blasphemy to question anything. I mean, it's not blasphemy to have questions and wonder things. That's the root of faith is to ask questions. What is the definition of blasphemy? Uh, blasphemy is typically any statement that contra... That it, bla to blaspheme is to say things about God and about faith that are not true or are insulting so for example the the idea of lilith is blasphemy yeah you know, to, to suggest that adam had a first wife is blasphemy to suggest that jesus had a wife is blasphemy um it, basically anything along those lines a heresy is a set of blasphemous beliefs um but a a, a blasphemy is a, a kind of a singular term um you know if if i were to say that uh trying to think of a good example here that many people would know but it's kind of hard but I, I think that lilith one's probably the best example to say that adam had a first wife before eve would be blasphemy right that draws into quite yeah, yeah uh, more more directly blasphemy is stuff that has to do with demeaning the office of god yeah oh so, yeah lilith you could definitely say because it's like that implies that god's was wrong or that he messed up or he lied to people whatever um so yeah, you could say that you could definitely say that Lilith is a form of blasphemy. So to to qu to ask questions like, is this what I believe? Like that's fine. But if you continue to be like, no, I think God's wrong. I think I'm right. That would be a blasphemy. Mm -hmm. You can't call God a sin. Also, if you if you're looking at it and you're saying, I just don't feel like God likes that me all that much. What you did that was a blasphemy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You can't do that. You can't call God a sin. That's blasphemy. I hate you. Stop. You know what you're doing. <laughs> now we're both angry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, you got to remember that the idea of God works in mysterious ways is a very real concept. There's stuff that's going to happen to you in life, it, whether you believe in God or not. There's stuff that's going to happen to you in life that you're going to, at the time, you know, ask why and wonder, you know, what did you do to deserve this? And the reasoning will reveal itself later. Usually it's me being an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then 
lastly is please explain more about the serpent because I think he personally is responsible in quotations or him possessed by Satan for the whole apple thing. Uh, more about the serpent. Uh, I mean, well, I can tell you it wasn't an apple. Oh, yeah. the The reason we call it an apple is because in in, in Middle German, uh, the word for fruit was apfel. Hmm. So in Old English, the word for fruit was also apfel. Hmm. Uh, so we it, it means fruit. The word was fruit. Um, but uh, aside from that, we I I don't know what there is to really explain. I mean the. The idea is, in some cases, the idea is that it's Satan. In some cases, the idea is that it's not Satan. I think the idea is that it's Satan, personally. Serpent also doesn't necessarily mean snake. Um, it's pretty it's pretty clear later in the Bible that it's yeah. Satan. It's specifically like, Satan, Lucifer, the one who appeared as a serpent before yeah. Eve. That one, <laughs> the devil. And people are like, I don't know, it's not that clear, really. Mm -hmm. Could be anyone. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's it's... Uh, you gotta remember that Satan's whole purpose is he's the accuser. That's his job is his job is to test whether or not people are faithful. So that's why he does it. You know, that's why he tempts Jesus for 40 days in the desert. That's why he appears to Job and ruins his life. Um, you know, that's, that's his job. Uh, that's why he delays the angel. That's, you know, coming to help Daniel. <laughs> his, his job is to test people's faith. God will allow you to walk into a situation that he told you not to. Satan will deliberately lead you into that location. Hey, yeah, you can you can do what you want. Yeah, block. <laughs> uh, the other Korean for two dollars said, "Basedest tribe of Israel outside of Levi." Judah, I guess. Because when the rest of the tribes were like, you know what, I feel like worshiping other gods. Judah was like, mm, no. <laughs> they also survived the They're Babylonian like, uh, invasion longer. No. Judah, absolutely. Uh, Rafa Majava Chief. Uh, Jesus called the Lion of Judah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely, Judah. Rafa Majava Chief for $5. Lastly, thank you all so much for doing this. I love learning about the Bible, and I think you all do it best. Uh, my Rothcopter goes su 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 su. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. It's very kind. Joe Freeman for $10 said, Why is it that God will send Eli uh, Elisha bears to maul people, calling him bald, but when the ATF calls me a criminal, all I get is prison time in Minecraft? Why is it that God will send Elisha bears to maul people for calling him bald, but when the ATF calls me a criminal, all I get is prison time in Minecraft? I'm going to say is he wants bears to fight the ATF. That's what he's getting at. <laughs> Certain things would have gone differently in history if bears were involved. Yeah, the Eye of a Dream speech would have been wild. <laughs> Imagine if... <laughs> yeah. Is that what your mind went to? I don't know. It was Martin Luther King Day recently. I think that was just the first historical like, event. Yeah, the Civil Rights Movement. That's uh, the Constitutional what, that's Convention. What, I mean, I imagine, thinking, imagine if they had all gone to stab thinking, Caesar. Wait, what if the Branch Davidians... <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking of two yeah. specific incidents in the 90s. Oh, okay, good point, Ruby Ridge. <laughs> I'm surprised the the Bears did not get involved at Ruby Ridge. They seem like they must have been close. They probably knew it wasn't worth it. <laughs> the Bears were like, hide the spot. these people are loud. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> they were trafficking shotguns through Bears. <laughs> That's what the real reason they were there. Wouldn't surprise me. To, before we get on something, keep, get, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll literally uh, be here all Rowan night. Rowan D for two dollars <laughs> said. Bears. So judges really were the biblical biblical jury duty. Uh, uh, eh, not quite. More. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not what they're mentioning. It's because I was talking about like it's pretty much whenever God said your numbers up. Yeah. You go. Like, oh, okay, so jury duty. That's funny. <laughs> They're a little bit more like Dog the Bounty Hunter, I guess. Fair. Uh, young Volio for $10 said, uh, Dagon really said, is that the correct pronunciation of that? Yeah. Uh, Dagon really said, hands up, don't shoot before God shot him not 29 times in self defense. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Remember what we, we said about, remember what we said about reading about them before we read year. them? Yeah, but the reason this I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> The, the reason I'm here is so that way I say the blasphemous stuff, so that way you guys are still That's not righteous. blasphemous, that's just political. 
fair. <laughs> uh, I say the bad thing, so you guys can't, can't cancel. Oh, good God. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, two moons for twenty dollars said, "Hope you listen. Hope you'll listen to the Jonathan Pagu or uh, Pagu for more insight." I don't know what that specifically is about, but I will look into him. Fair. Uh, and then uh, the other Korean Korean for five dollars said, "I wonder how the demon inhabiting Dagon felt when his worshippers brought the box of the being that literally BTFO'd him and his homeboys out of heaven." <laughs> you gotta wonder. He was uh, like. Oh, no 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 <laughs> my... Dagon's like oh, oh my god oh you guys brought me a what is that <laughs> <laughs> oh, no it's the magic box get it out <laughs> he's like I feel an energy radiating from this that last time I felt a, it did not go that, well that, that's a funny visual <laughs> visual the demons in the temple and they're just, the Philistines like bum 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 are just carrying it in, and he's like no 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 no. <laughs> that, that scene out. with uh, Tom Hardy from Venom. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no 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 no. Yeah, no, yeah. no. <laughs> I'm thinking of two different things. Yeah. One was the guy in Chernobyl <laughs> looking at the graphite, being like, nope, it's not there. And the other one's like, put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I just saw not not a super chat, but someone commented normally. Uh, whenever the Dagon's watching the Philistines walk out after they leave it, they're mm -hmm. like, "Michael, don't leave me here." <laughs> <laughs> Michael. Oh my God. Dagon was it's not happy with the energy created in the studio. Michael. <laughs> The ultimate vibe check? <laughs> Archie, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. What, do you want to come up again? I think so. Yeah. It seems to be come the case. On. What do we got next? Uh, the next one is uh, from uh, Azami. Are you guys ever going to do an episode about the judges like Samson, Ayod, Ben, Gara, and Deborah? Oh, yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. Definitely going to get there. It's a big book. Uh, <laughs> the Gord is back with another gold one. Uh, Arc Contents. Ten Commandments, Joshua Sword, Avon's Club Card, and 36 cents. <laughs> 36 cents. Uh, inflation, because of inflation, that was a lot more money back there then. There we go, yeah. another... <laughs> uh, uh, adjusted to time, that was about $8 billion. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most money. <laughs> yeah. Weird Collar uh, Guy uh, said, The Ark is God's footstool. Why well, that okay, remember the question about blasphemy? <laughs> that that would that, count. That's that's just, it's described as that, I'm pretty sure. I think it's described as the footstool of God. Really? I'm almost positive. Because it's how he it's how he steps to earth to communicate with man. Yeah. I did not. I don't know think that they one. meant that in a weird way, did they? Okay. See, know, this maybe. is why I read them anyway, sure it's, because it's, I'm not sure what blasphemy is and isn't in here, but yeah. Don't stick your nose in uh, my mouth. Christmas loving engineer for a hundred bucks. Thank hey, you. Very yo. much. Said, uh, hey, y'all, love both the Aidens and Wendigoon's content, and especially love the Weird Bible podcast. Thanks, y'all, for a place to go and learn more about the Bible. Well, thank you. You're welcome. And I'm glad I'm thank glad you, you love you. Christmas and engineering. We need people like that in this world. Uh, Jack Manson for $5 said, maybe God should have gifted them pattern recognition, too. This is back when we were talking about uh, the, the, the Jewish people going back to other yeah. deities. Yeah. Uh, Randaroo26 for $49.99. Thank you. Thank said, uh, just wanted to say a million thanks to you both. I was raised Catholic and felt pushed away from the church after I came out as part of the LGBTQ community. You guys finally helped me find my way back to God in a way the church never could. Oh, well, thank you. That's awesome. I'm sorry that your cool. church uh, made you feel unwelcome. That is not how that's supposed to be. Church is supposed to be a place of guidance and spiritual healing, not a place of anger and, and uh, rudeness. Yeah. Uh, it's a spiritual hospital is, I think, the best uh, the best description I've ever heard of a church. Interesting. Yeah. It's a good thing there's no insurance involved. Uh, weird collar guy for $5 says... There is insurance. It's just got a very low premium. Fair. Well, <laughs> insurance companies, I guess I meant. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 82.1 and the rest, God addresses the gods and he fires them because they are not doing their job for which they were created. 80, Psalm 82. I'm going to pull that up. 82.1. Yep. Curious because I want to read that. Isaiah, any thoughts on that one? Uh, what was it? I Psalm 82? Psalm 82, 1. Well, and, and the rest. The rest yeah, God addresses 
the gods, and he fires them because they are not doing the job for which they were created. Let's see. What's he, what's he actually say? Um, sing Eight. aloud to God our strength. Oh, Make a joyful oh, shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song as right the timbrel, the pleasant harp, the lute. Um, is a statue. Is it Davidisms a in the beginning. Um, okay. Oh God, his hmm. congregation. Uh, said Psalm eighty-two, right? Correct. Oh, I was reading eighty-one. I'm stupid. Um, yeah, God standeth in the congregation, judgeth among the gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Defend them. Blah, 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 blah. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men, all like one of the princes. Nations, for that shall inherit all nations. That just sounds like David describing the the princes of the mm -hmm. nations, demons, as we talked about earlier. This this is uh, where translation becomes important. Help man, but now they are... Yeah, th this is where translation becomes really important. Because in Psalm 82, 1, God stands in the congregation of the mighty, uh, is, is the term that's used. Uh, but uh, the Hebrew word there is El. So God is standing in the congregation of the high, essentially, um, which is the divine. He judges among the Elohim, which are, of course, the, the high ones. Elohim is a term that in English often gets translated to gods. That's not really the best possible translation. Yes, it's that that is the accepted one that is the common one but you miss the cultural context when you read it in english and you don't know the the background of the hebrew elohim is not a term that refers to multiple gods of creation it refers to multiple divine entities there are even people in the bible who get referred to as elohim um so i think you know that's but yeah that's kind of what i think he's doing is he's talking to the princes he's like as i said he's talking to the the angels not the, these are not gods necessarily in that in that you know that way it should also be noted that the book of Psalms is a book of poetry. Yeah, that's uh, it. that David is right. A lot he uses a lot of poetic metaphor. Yeah, and the cup. This is just a Bible I have that has like commentary parts. It says that a lot of scholars believe that God is talking to the kings of other nations here because he specifically refers to other nations, and often at the time people were referred to as gods if they were just like leaders of kingdoms and whatever. Like uh, Nebuchadnezzar was referred to by a, a god amongst his people, or yeah. whatever. So he looks at the gods and the nations, and says, even though you have been gods, you will die like men. So it could also just be him talking to other kings. Either way, this isn't God talking to gods that he appointed over in different places. Yes. Cool. Roberto Rodriguez Jr. for $5 said, The Bible seems to be a parenting book on what to do and not to do, and what values are necessary for a stable society. Yeah, that's Bible pretty... Seems... Yep. That's yeah. The... That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you notice, if you read it, like, what... A lot of people take it, and on both sides, you'll see people who take stuff like, uh, a, a... There's the line about a wife is supposed to be obedient to her husband. Uh, that appears in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And they'll take that and they'll, and people who disagree with Christianity will say, see, this is ridiculous. This is, you know, saying that women should be subservient to men. And then people who are very traditionalist will say, oh, well, this is clearly saying women are supposed to be subservient to men and feminism is wrong. Um, the next line, typically, if you're looking at that, that sentiment, is uh, like men provide for your wives men be you know there for your wives protect your wives respect your wives so it's it, it a lot of the book is first of all you got to understand the cultural context of the time in which it's written women absolutely could not strike out on their own in in ancient israel there was you would die it, it, we are talking about a time when brute force was the the thing of the day there was nothing you could possibly use with skill to win a confrontation between a woman and a man in almost every single case. Yep. Samuel so, Colt had not been around yet. Yeah, you know, there's there's no great equalizer yet, if you know what I mean. So you got to remember that a lot of this stuff is in the context of the ancient world, where what what the Bible does is it sets up a proper functioning household in late Bronze Age society. And then it goes on to revise it for Babylonian. It revises it for Roman. So you start to, you know, you've got to remember the cultural context of the book. And... That, that's 
that's a very important aspect to it. But yeah, it does set up a lot of guidelines for how to have a functioning family unit, how to have a functioning relationship. Um, you know, and I think people like to take things out of context and lean into it way too much, you know. When when men are when women are instructed to be obedient to their husbands, men are also being instructed not to demand things of their wives that are ridiculous. So that's kind of where it is, you know. It's it's not saying women should do whatever their husband says. It's you know, if if your husband says, can you please make me a dinner? I'm going to be out in the f like fields, you know, taking care of the sheep all day. That's a reasonable request, especially if you as the wife, if you're, you know, your role in the household is the homemaker. Um, as you get into more and more modern society, obviously the standards for obedience and respect are going to change. It's just a matter of, you know, treating each other in an appropriate way. That's what the Bible is saying. It's not saying, you know, that the woman should be a slave to her husband. It's not saying that the husband should have complete control over the woman. Just as children are to respect their parents and parents are to be, you know, kind and, you know, admonish their children when necessary, but not, you know, abuse them. There's, it's a lot of give and take and a lot of, you know, one thing evens out another. And I think people miss that. They miss the forest for the trees. Thoughts? <laughs> nice. Uh, Christian Bennett, hello, sir, for $10, said, Deuteronomy 32, 8, the nations were divided among the sons of God. That is the the one I was looking for. Thank you. Um, and by the way, uh, sons of God in the Old Testament is exclusively used to refer to um, angels in the Old Testament. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Ronald Hughes for $20 says, this show is continuing crazy. How many watch hours do you guys need for monetization, I wonder? On the new channel, we need 1,000 subscribers, which we have hit, thank you guys, and 4,000 watch hours. And then it will be uh, available for monetization, which means that we can accept Super Chats, which that's really the big thing here is it, if you want to be able to do Super Chats and, you know, have an organized question system for next month's stream, we need to get that channel to 4,000 <laughs> watch hours. Yep. Um... We just, well, we uploaded all the previous renditions. Yeah, you can go watch, there, so. you, and you could literally just leave them running in the background. We'll get the, the watch hours time. So if yep. you just pop open a tab and have those run, you know, we'll, we'll get to that 4,000 watch hours real quick. But again, Weird Bible Channel is up. It exists if you want to go check it out. Uh, one temp uh, The One Templar for $5 said, Glad to see the Bible podcast is back. A small update. My fiance rejected the baby name Wendy Goon. <laughs> Unfortunately, she also rejected Lori Lodge. <laughs> I appreciate the attempt. I really do. Oh my gosh. Uh, Sun Wukong. So I'm so scared of that happening. <laughs> what about the first name Wendy and the last name, or the middle name Lori? Yeah. Wendy Lori. Just the idea of a person naming another human being of my YouTube channel <laughs> me <laughs> to people like I'm gonna get a Wendigoon tattoo I'm like please don't oh, oh my word okay but to be fair if it was of your logo and not your face that would that would go hard like the deer the, like, the like deer like skull with the NBGs it's, 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 it's weird like that's too much responsibility <laughs> too much responsibility for me it's like people wear me on their skin i better act right like no <laughs> please don't uh sun wukong for 20 dollars said do you guys think when you sin against others you should confess and ask forgiveness if telling them the sin would hurt them or is it better to just confess to god i.e talking to someone behind their back talking about someone behind or their back, someone yeah. about someone behind their back well i mean sin is sin is a transgression against god if that makes sense. A sin is a transgression against God's law. God's word. You can't really sin against another person. You can sin against God. What you do to the other person might be a crime or might be rude, but it wouldn't be a sin necessarily. Um, to, against them. The sin, so the sin is between you and God. So when if you're repenting for the sin, if you're apologizing can, for the you sin... Can you can... Go ahead. I was going to say, I, you can sin or offend against the brethren. There is yeah. mentions of, like, the brethren offending or accusing each other. Uh, oh, I... Go ahead. I didn't mean yeah. to cut What, what I was going to say is the, the repentance for the sin is between you and God. Repentance for what you did is between you and that person. So if you're, if you're apologizing for 
what you did to somebody, obviously apologize to that person. Um, it's up to you if you think telling that person will hurt them more or not. Um, you know, that's I, I, what I would do in that case is I would pray. I, I would, I would go to God and say, I've done this thing. I feel like I've hurt somebody I love and I don't know how to atone for it and hope for a sign. But I would say that the, in, in strictly speaking, in terms of like punishment for sin, the sin is between, is between man and God, in my opinion. Cool. Isaiah, uh, do you have, do you have thoughts? Um, the, there are times, like, uh, of course, when you need to go to forgiveness. So, like, if you do something directly and, you know, they know that you've done something, it's good to, um, after you found yourself in the right mind, to go to them. And it's, go it's always good to ask someone for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. However, if it's something that may bring trouble or spite, uh, if you do make it public, like, if it wasn't something that other people need to know about, frankly, and you kind of make a show of it and take mm -hmm. it to someone else and it causes more issues... Uh, if, if they know that you've offended them, then apologize. If they don't, uh, then fix yourself effectively. Yeah, I like that. Sure. Uh, Young Olio for $10 said, The Weird Bible Podcast is a sequel to VeggieTales. <laughs> it's canon. I'm not Steven Crowder. You can't change my mind. There's a lot to unpack with that comment. Again, blasphemy. Somehow. I don't know how, but that's there's blasphemy somewhere in all of that. <laughs> uh, we'll roll. Uh, Cody Rex for uh, Cody Rex 070 for five dollars said, "Thank you guys for helping me find the Lord." Thoughts on playing Dungeons and Dragons as a Christian? Thinking of running my own campaign in a homebrewed world. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I had a funny experience with this recently. Isaiah, do you want to take that one first? I, I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons person. Is that, is there a reason you wouldn't? It's, it's a, it's a tabletop I RPG, but during more. the satanic panic back in the eighties, a bunch of like right. fundamentalist Christians thought it was like devil worship and not just a role playing uh, game where you're having fun uh, with your buddies. I, I mean, I, gotcha. there, there's, there's a difference. I think intent matters. There's a big difference between sitting there and playing a game, role playing a character in a fantasy world versus you know, praying to Bathsheba. Yeah, drawing like, pentagrams like, on your basement floor and yeah, trying like, to summon Beelzebub. Yeah, it's just, it, you know... It, and as far as I'm concerned, Dungeons & Dragons is no different than Skyrim, and the fact that there's a panic over one or the other just means that... It, if if people are upset about Dungeons & Dragons but not Skyrim, it just shows you that they're not serious. That they don't know what they're talking about. Like, uh, they're they're the same game, but one is virtual. Uh, Young Bolio for two dollars said, "Thou shalt not tax." Yes, there is no commandment to tax. I will say that. Uh, in addition to that, Matthew Moody for five bucks said, "I would buy a God hates the IRS shirt in a heartbeat." <laughs> so we might have to get on that one. Talk about getting yourself thrown on a watch list. Yeah, instantaneously. <laughs> Did we have a shirt God that says there it. are only one thousand seven hundred and fourteen IRS agents. Government diffidence. <laughs> yeah, that really. Like, on, God hates the IRS, and the oh, I in IRS is a rifle. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> How to get put on the watch list in one shirt? Yeah, literally. Uh, Matthew Holloway for five bucks said, "What do you think of people who claim that new books of the Bible <laughs> have cool. been there?" Or people who claim that adhering to the canon is small-minded. Oh, what do you think of the people who claim that new books have been there? Um, I, I mean, I think that it, there's a canon of works. The, the thing about the books of the Bible is that all of them were written in the first century AD. They were all written within the lifetime of the people who knew and walked with Jesus. The reason that new books of the Bible, things that came later, written by people who didn't know Jesus or any of the original apostles, they could just easily be lies, you know? Like, where's the evidence for divine inspiration? Um, I, I uh, just... Uh, the Holy Bible is the perfect inspired word of God, and it's perfect. You don't need any more. Uh, adding to it's dumb. Pointless. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and the thing I is, Christ, stand for it. <laughs> we're basically told after Revelation, like as as far as books of the Bible go, this is it. Like you're we're not done. getting any more. Yeah. You, you are you go. are in the end Show's days. Over, go home. Yeah. You are in the end days. It's all going to end soon. 
on a cosmic scale. Um, and you know what? We're good now. So that's why when, when you look at uh, both Mormons and Muslims, um, you know, they, they're, they're free to believe what they want, but that's, you know, the, there's no suggestion that there's going to be more books after Revelation. Uh, Blue Star 64 for 99 said, uh, why do the different flavors of Christianity hate each other so much? If they all believe the same thing, why is there so much animosity between the different churches? What do you think? Because I'm, I, I have thoughts, but I'd like to hear what you think. <laughs> I, I do Baptists not get along with like you know methodists that much than little stuff but if you're asking like why does i just protestants and catholics why do they kill each other for hundreds of years it's because there's some pretty big differences in faith yeah kind of this idea that like now it's kind of more unified like all oh, christians are christians like sure if you believe in christ as the savior for a long time there was like fundamental differences on what religion and christ was and in interpretations mm -hmm. Some of them were deemed, you know, by people at the time enough to kill each other over. Um, I guess it just depends on what you're asking. Some squabbles are petty. Other ones are like, yeah, they literally wanted each other dead because they were, like, effectively fighting each other over the very concept of what God is. Yeah. Um, agreed that they were, neither one was going to lose ground. So it just depends on what specifically you mean by christianity yeah and, and i think if you look at you know so much of it has to do with secular politics throughout history the early early church did not have these kinds of violent disagreements um i, I mean you have occasional stuff but it was usually centered around huge differences in theology like uh arius saying that god was not you know tripartite god was not a triune being god was in fact you know, God and then Jesus and the Archangel, or Jesus and uh, the Holy Spirit are supposed to be like these special class of super angels. Like those are, that's something that there was a legitimate fight over. But when you get later, the later you get, the more you see Christianity as the dominant religion starting to be used for political purposes rather than being used for faith purposes. The Catholic Church, of course, trying to assert power over, uh, you know, the French and the Germans and the English, all of that throughout the Middle Ages, the schism between the East and the West. All of these are more, more secular, more, uh, like, worldly politics-based than faith-based. Uh, part of the issue now is that the Catholic Church still has really not um, atoned for a lot of their medieval deceptions. The Eastern Orthodox Church is tiny, and Protestants, being the second largest group of Christians, have no reason to trust the Catholic Church because of the way the Catholic Church treated them for so many years. So there's a lot of animosity at a legitimate level, but much of what you see between various people from like, oh, I'm a Baptist and I hate Presbyterians, that's just stupid. That's just, a, you should not hate those people. As long as you agree on the fundamental concepts, you can disagree on the little things like how you worship on Sunday. You know, and I think people just take it to heart way too much and are so convinced with, you know, concerned with being right that they've forgotten that none of us are right, that we're all just doing our best. And as long as your intention is to do your best, that's, that's what should matter. Um, as long as you agree on the fundamental theological topics like the Trinity. Cool. Uh, Nerd Hill Productions says, Wendigoon's Wi-Fi has been sabotaged by the feds. It does seem that way. It really does. I believe it. <laughs> Uh, Brody Thornton for five dollars said, "Thank you guys for helping me come back to the faith. I love how you talk about the Bible in a fun, but still in a fun way, but still take it seriously." Well, thank you. I'd like to think that you know, if you were sitting down to dinner with like Matthew, he'd crack a few jokes. I don't think the apostles were consistently the most like solemn, somber people who never had any fun. I mean, didn't. I may be off base here, but I feel like there are elements that show Jesus had a pretty solid sense of humor. There's a few. Also, there's like John pointing out that he was the first one to Jesus's grave. like <laughs> Stuff like that, you know. There's You gotta remember, these were humans. And if you take everything as seriously as you possibly can, yeah, that's not... I, I don't think that's the way to do things. And I think, honestly, it drives people away from the faith if you, if you can never laugh about anything. Yeah, nobody wants to live that way. What about you, Isaiah? Uh, yeah. 
Because <laughs> you, you know, you're supposed to enjoy the Christian life. It's not supposed to be some time of somber nothingness. So yeah. Uh, Rap Googler three said, "I turned twenty yesterday. Can you do Solomon next?" Congratulations on making it to twenty. You have survived teen pregnancy, I think. Um, well, his what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I'm assuming. <laughs> It's just, just you. That's where your brain goes. Yeah. It's like, oh, 20 teenage pregnancy. What a thing. Congrats. Way to, way to make it if through. You're, if you're 20 and you have $2 to spend on a super chat, I'm assuming you're not a parent. Um, <laughs> Fair. I can only imagine being a parent right now. It'd be horrible. Oh my, Aiden. I would have no money. Uh, Jake, Listen, if I start digging the hole, I'm going to finish it. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, you're the reason the poles are shifting. Uh, the political ones or the magnetic ones? Magnetic. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway uh J it's a it's a relevant question in this day and age yeah, that's a good point uh jacob jones for five dollars said have you guys listened to tyler childer's way of the tribune or triune god is a gospel-esque bluegrass album specifically tyler's great i do like tyler Fantastic. childer's i have not listened to that album yeah old times Screaming yeah, Young yeah. Volio, I see that. I'm not reading it. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I... <laughs> I'm sorry, but we, we don't need to mention that on this show. <laughs> yep. Uh, Rabbit Cougar 3 said, If a skinwalker kills a Wendigo and dressed in it, would the skinwalker gain their powers without the hunger? Can you do a video on Kath Palug? 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 I'm going to have to look into that. Yep. Uh, I'm going to write down Kath Palug. Um, as far as the skinwalker issue goes, uh, this whole thing about skinwalkers, like, posing as people comes out of, like, white person internet stuff. It has nothing to do with the actual mythology. And I'm not saying white person in a, a derogatory way at all. I'm clearly white. I'm just saying that, like, it, it's not native. It's European addition to it. So, um, no, no, you, it, cause you would just be putting on the skin of a human. And the whole point of being a skinwalker is to adopt the instincts and capabilities of an animal that is not you. You wouldn't want to become another person uh also the skin would just fall apart wendigos are like ugh. They're, ro they're like rotting living corpses what's what, what's the one word the big word oh uh gaunt, emaciated um desiccated desiccated that's yeah it. that's the big one uh plague s36 said i just want to say y'all have helped my faith and y'all will truly have several jewels added to y'all's crowns in heaven <laughs> thank y'all so much and go methodist boo baptist <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> which which side of the Methodists right now? We're in a bit of a we're in a bit of an argument. <laughs> we we can't seem to agree with each other on what the method is. Uh, Ironically, uh, following the jewels being added to our crowns in heaven, the next super chat is Vanita's manga review saying you will not see heaven. So we've got we've got some different predictions. We got some different Bible bets being placed here. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, Atlas Class for 20 bucks said, off-topic question, should we explore the universe slash galaxy? Fiance believes we should not because God made the Earth and only the Earth capable of life. I believe we should explore because it's there. Thoughts. Can I hop in real quick? Sure, science man. My, my suggestion there would be there's no way for us to know that God has only made Earth uh, for our life, considering we haven't gotten a chance to explore the other possibilities of life out there. So, yeah, I mean, does God ever say that the Earth is the only habitable planet? He says that the uh, the star the 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 heavens and the stars were made for our wonderment. So it doesn't explicitly say no. It's the implication that the purpose of the sun and moon and stars is for our to, to, for our majesty of space. That being said, there's no reason you can't go expert there's nothing in the bible that's like and if you can't live there get it um I, there's, there's no reason not to it's all part of god's creation might as well go take a peek yeah i mean like um, the, the story we get is the story of the creation it, of the universe people towards the sun but yeah <laughs> it's the creation of the universe it's you know we we get the story about earth there's it's possible there's other planets he just kind of felt like creating you know there's no reason why God didn't create Earth and then go somewhere else and be like, ah, I'll put some trees and animals here and see if they find it. A little Easter egg for you. And then, of course, all the angels were like, what's Easter? And he's like, ah, you'll find out. <laughs> uh, Rap Cougar 3, I'm just going to consolidate these sure. two into one. 
Uh, just wants a donation goal so that uh, we can make you watch an anime series called Fate and that we, they will message you on Patreon to explain it. I don't want to watch anime. He really hates anime. <laughs> I'll consider it. I will consider it. What would be your dono goal? That's what I have to consider. I've got to think about what's, <laughs> got to think about what's probable in terms of our uh, our monthly donations and uh, how I can make this something that actually has to try. Try, yeah. I don't want to set it at a thousand and then just hit it, and then I have to watch an entire anime series. That's fair. Uh, Matthew Moody for twenty bucks said, "What do you think Jesus wrote in the sand in John eight? I've always thought it was the sins of the men that brought the woman to him." It's the uh, John eights the uh, the own. Um, they're bringing the uh, the woman who many believe to be Mary Magdalene forward. Mm -hmm. Um, he probably a lot of people think he wrote the command. I honestly don't know. I have given this thought. Okay, uh, he wrote. Um, do what others. There's no telling, but the, he wrote. Then was. He wrote something that was personal enough to the Pharisees to make him not sinless, and they didn't murder the woman possibly and Mary Magdalene. You went through the papers yeah, right there again. Yeah, you up for most of that. Well, uh, basically, he wrote something in the sand that made the Pharisees realize they weren't sinless, and they didn't murder the woman. So, Fair enough. I'm trying to wait, where's the while you look for that i'm gonna go to the next one which is from sun wukong for five bucks it says what do you guys think blasphemy against the holy spirit is i've heard some people say it's dying without accepting jesus but i have no clue to be honest it's uh from matthew chapter 12 um talking about the unforgivable sin uh, but basically, it says that the only sin that will not be forgiven is blasphemy of the against the Holy Spirit, and then Jesus goes on in the next few verses to explain that's a rejection of the offering of the Son of God, which mm -hmm. is the Holy Spirit dwelt in man as the transference to. So what he's saying is the only unforgivable sin is the sin of not accepting forgiveness of not being saved, which tracks. So blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is to reject Christ effectively. Mm -hmm uh propane salesman for 10 bucks said i made an iceberg video on the evil dead movies based heavily on goons old videos i just reached 2k views oh congratulations oh, that's, that's a that's a great oh, congratulations milestone. i'm very happy to hear that man very cool very cool and that's 2K very views inspiring was, uh, i appreciate that thank you 2k views was normal for us not that long ago yeah right yeah seriously keep, keep at it i mean we were seeing 2,000 views a video a year ago yep so like Keep at 515 it. people here right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it took us a long time to get here, and a certain person in the room right now was very helpful with that. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> oh that will not be forgotten, sir. <laughs> he got it here. He got it here. <laughs> uh, Maynard Reinhardt for 1999 said, Hey, guys, big fan. Just wanted to say that you all inspired me to start teaching Bible study at the Catholic church I go to. I know, gross. <laughs> no, but I being Catholic is fine. But I appreciate you guys <laughs> helping me deepen my faith. Keep up the good work. I was born and raised Catholic. Oh, congratulations. So. Explains explains my problem. Congratulations. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, all cool. dragons cool. are sluts for 10 bucks. Said genuine questions. Taxes versus... Immediately. If one AD immediately <laughs> turned from that last one. Oh, yeah. Dragons uh, are slut. That is the name of an account. Oh, yeah. Uh, genuine question. Taxes versus, uh, I believe that's teething in the Bible? Uh, teething, tithing? Tithing. Tithing. Uh, modern time, I'm sure it isn't much different from them. Uh, the taken versus the willing giving. Uh, love all y'all's content. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, tithing kind of is like taxation for the church. But there's no, like, oh, the that nobody's going to come and put you in jail if you don't do it. The difference is tithing began in the New Testament as a proponent of what James said in James chapter 1. Actually, hold on. It's James chapter 1, verse 17, I believe. Um, it's, it's whatever the last verse. Uh... 
this is important, I swear. Uh, uh Hebrews, James assessment. Here we go, yeah. James 1, uh, it wasn't 17, it's the last one. Verse 27, so whenever just try, describing what the church should be, religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widow in their infliction and to keep himself unspotted for the world. James says that the number one purpose of religion is the widowed and the fatherless for the church to take care of them. So during the time of the New Testament, there was a struggle where they didn't, like the men of the church didn't have the money to do that because what a church is supposed to be doing is helping those who can't, outreach in the community, helping others. So Christ set, or not just Christ, the Christ and the disciples set up the office at um, p people who are a member of the church who want to be a part of it and see others be helped should donate 10% of their earnings to the church so they could go to care of the widowed and father, as James says. The purpose is to help others. Yeah. So whereas tithing is the voluntary giving to God to help others, taxes is going to a for-profit state against your own will or they'll kill you. It's a little bit different. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah, I could not say it better myself. And let me see this. <laughs> Go for it. Because, uh, I, I mean, I'm just going to level with you guys. We got way more questions than we usually do. <laughs> so I'm going to read through them and make sure there's you no know, duplicates and, and that I take uh, take some of the most interesting ones. So I apologize if we don't get to yours. Um, we'll probably have to change up the system for this for for the future. But I promise you that it will not be a, you know, pay to play thing. It, it'll be just we, we pick. Um so I promise you in the future, Super Chats will not be like we answer the $50 ones, but not the $5 ones. But we probably won't be able to take all of them because I'm looking through here and oh my lord. Yep. Um, yeah, unfortunately after this, Madison and I still I have, have to, to shoot film video, yeah. for Friday's video. So, and Isaiah's already given a lot of his time. So. And his precious internet connection. Yes. Yeah, we um, can only take up so much of his bandwidth. Uh, this it's, is a really quick it's one. It's really fighting and kicking right now. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a, a very common one, so I think it's a good one to take though. Uh, what does Chango for five dollars? Thank you. Said, uh, what does the Bible say about circumcision? And am I in sin because I'm uncircumcised? There's nothing in the New Testament about circumcision. I don't think. Right. Jesus explicitly says it doesn't matter anymore. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's often the circumcision's done away with because the Holy Ghost did all that. Yeah, I, I mean that's so that's kind of thing. Is like the circumcision was your hmm? paper shredder. As mentioned earlier, if it has to do with the laws and living of the old, ignore it. Not relevant anymore. Gotcha. The new yeah. and that doesn't. So no, you're not. Yeah, the idea behind circumcision is that it's a visible, like, mark of dedication to the Lord. Um, baptism would be the same thing for us for in the New Testament if you're a Christian. Um, you, are, you are making a public display of your faith. Um, let's see. Uh, Aquafan, I am not familiar with uh, Chuck Swindle. I don't know if Isaiah is. Name's uh, familiar. Let's see uh jack manson um the question about dragons i uh, that is one that i do not know um but as always probably something from prehistory uh he asked why do uh why does every culture have their lightning god fight a dragon um young volio said i'm in the middle of an argument with my co-worker she says that it is a sin to visually depict anything heavenly she quoted leviticus thoughts as we've said multiple times tonight, just because Leviticus says you can't do it doesn't necessarily mean you can't. Christ's word is the new the new deal. Um, so if so, if someone's quoting Leviticus as a sense of morality, then they're just trying to get social credit points. Yeah. They don't actually care. Also, the church already went through this. It was called the Iconoclast Controversy, and what it determined was, yeah, you can have images. Um, there, there was a whole thing. When was so, that? The, the 11th century, I think. Um. No, it's investiture controversy. Maybe Iconoclast might have been earlier. No, I feel like it was the 1050s. Um, and that I, I, feel, I think the Iconoclast controversy was what finally broke the camel's back. But I might be mixing it up with something. It's been a while. Um, Maddie for 50 said, absolutely love these podcasts. I fell away from the church after high school, but the way you all discuss your faith inspires me to try rediscovering it as an adult. Th keep doing God's work, y'all. Thank you very much. That's why we do it. Um, I would never have tried Doctor Enough without you, Wendigoon. That's from Drew. 
uh hello how do i get some up yeah, here that that's stuff was so spirit. good right yeah can you, we'll send you a we'll, how about this? we will send you a box of coffee if you send us a box of doctor enough please that's fair i'll see if i can find a box of doctor enough you just have to catch it in a gas station every now and then but if i can amass <laughs> it i will send it have you had any luck contacting them since Oh, nothing. People tweet at me every day. They're like, get doctor enough. Get on this guy. I just don't care. I, I mean, am... there's also the chance that this is just a small business who I am harassing publicly <laughs> on the internet and they, have, they want nothing to do with me. Oh, so that's possible. Uh, but until I hear that directly from them, I'm not going to quit. So, yeah. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, Hello said, uh, thank you all so much for doing this show. Thank you. And also asked what we think about modern denominations and churches. But I think we covered that in another question pretty well. So yeah. move move swiftly along. Young Volio wants to collect as many foreskins as David. Admirable goal. I don't know how you're going to achieve that without going to prison, but good luck. It seems like um, a slight threat. Does Wendigoon have any advice on finding and exploring abandoned buildings? Also, have any of you played the game Blasphemous? I have Blasphemous, but I haven't played it. Isaiah, your thoughts on abandoned buildings. What, do I have any advice about abandoned buildings? Was yeah. that the question? Uh, do you have uh, any advice about finding them and exploring make sure them? Finding them. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Most industrial areas will have one. Just make sure it's not somewhere that's under demolition because it is possible for floors to give away. Yeah. Um, a lot of old houses that are, again, make sure these things are actually abandoned. Yeah. Uh, that's why typically things near more urban areas are safer because you know a house may still be owned and you're still trespassing mm -hmm. but yeah, if you find like you know an old abandoned cityscape just make sure the floor is not caving in and have a good time yep never Probably go alone official legal advice also never go careful. alone i don't know how it is in wherever you are but i know exploring a lot of abandoned places back when i was in high school because we lived in a very post-industrial area at that point uh since then a lot of the buildings have been torn down but even some are still standing Around here, so many people were going to certain places. Like, we have an entire industrial park in the next town over that's about a dozen old, like, industrial massive buildings that they had to concrete up. Talking about uh, Space City? No, no, Limerick Industrial Park. Oh, Limerick, okay. Uh, because so many people were, like, going and checking it out, and it became so dangerous uh, because fires got accidentally started there, and they now have cops that consistently patrol that area. Jeez. And if they see you, they will arrest you for trespassing. So we could probably get permission to go look around. Probably, yeah. Uh, but for just, like historical if, purposes. Yeah, but if you're gonna if you're gonna go looking for places like that, just be careful because some of them are patrolled pretty heavily, yes. depending on where you are. Uh let's see. Um da, da, da. thoughts on the book of Job, Golden Trash. Uh we did an entire podcast episode on it. It's like four hours long. <laughs> Uh, you, I would go watch that. It's over on the Weird Bible channel. Um, let's see. Uh, Nick's Highlander for $2 asked, I am curious on y'all's take on the cult of saints. I assume you mean the uh, the prayers for intercession in Catholic and Orthodox communities. I, I would assume that's what you mean. In which case, I personally, as a, as a Protestant, I don't put much stock in it. I would rather communicate with God directly. I don't think that... I, I don't find the doctrine that the saints are listening to what we have to say very compelling i don't know about you isaiah ditto. you say ditto yeah. okay <laughs> um <laughs> yeah yeah ditto i don't yeah I don't, I don't put stock to it yeah let's see uh somebody Trent, what i was just gonna say somebody did just ask uh most recent one legitimate question are there any more videos where you guys will be doing in the field investigations uh i, I know i would love to if, if you're down for it, we'd probably just have to find yeah, something sure, and go, sure, go sure, look at it. I'm sure it will at some point. Yeah, I, I think those will, those will probably... Be like, yep, that's a thing. I think Those that, will crop up probably at least once a year. I think at some point we should go to that town in Wyoming that we had the eye on about Oh, the, Casper? Yeah, that just seems yeah. like there's a lot of weird things going on in Casper. That there, could be yeah, definitely. The, the number of missing persons there for such a small area was weird. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else we got? Uh, Trent Rosedale asked if we would uh, do... Uh, thoughts on the Shroud of Turin, uh, Ein Saf, Kabbalah. Let me read those first, because I have them on my list. I I just haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, and the Shroud of Turin, it, it's really heavily in debate. Uh, there's some evidence that it was probably created uh, during, I think, the medieval period. There's another suggestion that it was during the Enlightenment, and some are that it's actually real. 
it's hard to say because of there was a repair during I think the Middle Ages, but it was uh, or it, you know they, they can't they can't carbon date it properly anymore, so it's just hard. Um, let's see, uh, favorite work of fiction from Esau Nothing. Ever? What? Uh, ever? Yeah, I guess. The board, all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a big just all time favorite, I guess. Um, Mine's Lord of the Rings. I like uh, I like the country. Perhaps that one inspired me to a lot of the storytelling I'm into now. So you say no country for old men. That, yeah, gotcha. That's it. I I have yet to see that movie, but I've heard it's amazing. Like I I really gotta get get that one done. I, once again, I can't stand you. Um, let's see, uh, would you be, Rapid Cougar asked, would you be scared if a devil appeared before you? I think, I, I think you mean a demon, I would assume. The, the terms are synonymous, essentially. Uh, yeah, I'd be pretty frightened. I would, yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Yep, <laughs> that's the answer. Simply on a practical sure level, I feel like I, I, I feel like I would be quite shocked, uh, and, and frightened. Um, as far as, like, you know, yeah, I'd, I'd got the holy spirit and all that but i think i would still be caught off guard <laughs> hey big man i'm gonna be afraid of it absolutely yes. <laughs> um hunter is bored really wants us to say uh nathaniel james anderson i don't know who that is but i've said the words um that's your heck uh sun wukong said have you ever have you guys ever seen kingdom of heaven yes yes it is incredible it's one of my favorite movies have you seen it isaiah not no it's it's a good one you should you should it's a crusades movie uh about the uh, uh okay gotcha. the the fall of jerusalem to saladin's forces between the second and third crusade uh, uh, okay okay yeah stoney wants me to give archie a treat i will i cooked up uh some um beef trimmings for him and i've been keeping them in a little box and i just throw them to him every now and then <laughs> he loves them what uh the most recent one that just came in is uh young volio said Aiden is a fed. He hasn't seen No Country for, Mo for All. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, Not ironically. No. Yeah. I mean, see, anything that has Roger Deakins as the cinematographer for it is going to be a fantastic film. So. Yep. 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 Man, he's such a good. He's so good. <laughs> Isaiah, have you listened to any of uh, his podcasts? I've not. I didn't know he had one. Yeah, it's called the Team Deacons podcast. He and his wife uh, are doing it. They've been doing it for a few years now. I just found it like a few months back. And oh my God, it's like a crash course in everything film. Because they, they talk about stuff, but then they interview a bunch of different people. And oh, it is like wow. the best inside scoop. Be down for that. I love Deacons. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. And it's really interesting because when they have people on, he'll be like, it's so funny. Like the most recent one I listened to uh the one i'm not finished yet they're talking to the guy who directed into the spider-verse and apparently i totally forgot but deacons has done a lot of animation like he, they did the whole how to train your dragon trilogy and everything like that and it's just so interesting seeing somebody who's at like you know the top level of his portion of the craft asking different people from different parts of that just like how do you do this like you know what is what is the way this works and things like that it's you know it's really insightful and really interesting to hear the questions that a master asks other people who are masters of their craft. And it's an amazing inside look into how Hollywood actually operates. Sorry for the tangent. No, no, you're okay. Um, <laughs> oh, you're good. You're good. I, I love Roger Deakins. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Jork MV says, so if you dismiss, if you dismiss Lilith, does that mean having, uh, hanky panky with your relatives was not bad in the old testament uh also another question was the actual sin uh doing the horizontal tango i heard a theory about it um you're there's there's a very specific point what? questions the way they're worded <laughs> well i i swapped out some words i swapped out some words there for, oh, the, okay, for the advertising okay, guidelines okay, okay, yeah okay okay um so it's yeah. your fault it's your yeah that's fault. my fault <laughs> um i did change it's advertising guidelines um uh -huh. So uh, there's a very specific point in the Bible at which they actually get the order to not um, procreate with their relatives. I can't remember specifically when it is, but it's early. Um, it's Abraham. Yeah. Um, 
there it's reinforced a few times but yeah there's there's a certain point at which it's like don't don't do that um but early oh, oh I, I, i'm sorry i didn't know if you get i didn't know if you could hear me it's at abraham is it abraham's at the point where it's commanded yeah we're gotcha. don't do that anymore yeah, yeah 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 so it's not that long after the flood um gotta remember genetic issues in breeding the if you have Two generations of sibling inbreeding, you're immediately going to see problems. Uh, one generation, minor problems. Uh, multiple generations of inside of first cousins, you're going to see problems. So th there are specific things like definitely not your sisters or your mother or your daughters. First cousins are also not great. After that, there's a limited number of people and you got to do what you got to do. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, there is a definitely a trend away from anything that could be considered incest. Um, and as for the uh, the second part of the question, was the actual sin uh, doing it? I heard a theory about it. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. What sin is he talking about? Uh, it seems like... Um, I assume uh, adultery in general. Is adultery a sin? Is that what he's asking? Uh, it's it's a little hard to understand the question, to be honest. But it, yeah, 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 pretty pretty that. typically, doing that with anybody except your spouse is frowned upon. Typically, not good. Yeah. Yeah, and it you know, and, and then the thing is, if you if you're guilty in one, you're guilty in them all. So it doesn't really matter. Um. Let's see what else we have here. I uh, do not listen to Lord of Spirits. I uh, this one is uh, I'm I'm gonna have to start only looking at the Bible related ones. Unfortunately, um, sorry guys, <laughs> I don't want to get through these. Um, okay, we did cover that one from Matthew Holloway. Um, David wouldn't be a Pat's or Gino's guy; he'd be a Delisandro's guy. <laughs> <laughs> next question uh newman borders said first time in a live just want to say how much i love your content enjoy the money much love from indiana he gave 50 dollars. i just had to, that was very generous i did want to recognize that thank you so much um let's see uh as an atheist blank says for five dollars as an atheist i would like you to this is all caps as an atheist i would like you to know that i respect your beliefs and wish you the best thank you um i just thought of this but is phasmo blasphemous no because it's not pretending to be a religious authority you know, that's that's the same reason that Tolkien was able to write the Silmarillion is that he wasn't claiming it was real. It was fiction. So fiction isn't blasphemous. It's it's only when you claim something to be real that it becomes blasphemy. Am I correct about that? Would you agree? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Um. Thanks for answering my earlier question about D&D. &D. Also, what's the story with the warning in the Discord to not give instructions on how to make an IED? I, I, there doesn't need to be a story. Just don't give instructions on how to make napalm in the Discord server. <laughs> Should be self-explanatory. But the story is somebody was giving instructions on how to make napalm in the Discord server, so we had to say don't do that. I think I could have figured that one out. <laughs> I yeah, like... <laughs> I could have figured out why that's a rule, yeah. Um, the, the, the actual rule is no posting anything that would put you on a list. Uh, yeah, I think it's specifically the no fly list that I used. Um, hashtag God hates taxes from Benjamin Chapman. <laughs> Thank you. Isaiah, people want to know what the posters in your room are. Uh, the ones that you can see from here yeah. are 2001 A Space Odyssey, Resident Evil 2, and Carpenter's The Thing, and Attack on Titan. Some classics and then yes. Attack on Titan. <laughs> He's very much not an anime fan. If that was, I've seen a couple out. episodes of Attack on Titan. I actually don't have a problem with it. I just thought it was funny that it was like not... movies from the the twentieth century and then Attack on Titan. Yeah, <laughs> like... I'm not. There, there's more to decide. Taxi Driver, Boogie, uh, mm -hmm. um, John Wick, and Pulp Fiction. Oh, great movies. I'm a uh like uh it's, I, I don't watch anime but i really like attack on time gotcha that that's why i've heard a lot of people who don't watch anime do like attack on titan um let's see oh and brandon for 10 said wendigoon's videos inspired me to read the bible through i was raised a mormon and realized the heresy of the religion i feel kind of lost now but at least i feel like i'm going in the right direction going in the right direction is the only important thing 
That is very that is very kind. I'm very happy to hear that. Thank you very much. I'm glad that my videos can help in some small way and God bless you. Yeah. You're right. I appreciate that. Also, if you're watching this and you are a Mormon, we don't think you're a bad person. <laughs> we just disagree on your theology. Uh, let's see. Um, Esau Nothing said, thanks for making the Bible fun again for me. Well, thank you for watching. Um, let's see. David Osorio said, uh, really happy to finally be catching one of these live. Despite being an atheist, both Wendigoon and the Lore Lodge have made me realize how interesting Christianity and religion can be. Love y'all. Thank you very much. I, we welcome atheists to watch the show, whether they agree with us or not. Um, you know, at the very least, because it's an interesting story. It's an interesting thing to, to learn. And it's always good to understand the beliefs of the people around you. Um, let's see. Uh, post on the wall. DL said that he read the Bible, or he or she said that they read the Bible uh, while they were in basic training in the army. And it helped them get some perspective on the purpose of life. Keep up the hard work, Wendy. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Specifically <laughs> you, not lot. us. <laughs> oh, he... <laughs> they know we're not working hard. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Maynard Reinhardt said, forgot to ask a question with my super chat. If y'all could disband one three-letter agency, which would it be? <laughs> the IRS, because then all the rest of them lose IRS, their funding. IRS, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Take not off the head. IRS. Ready to kill you threatening to kill you for not taking your money like I, I hate the atf and stuff sure but being like <laughs> give us money or we'll shoot you I, getting mugged once a year every year yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> um all right uh elijah hetrick said uh dinosaurs question mark real i think yeah i think we have the evidence that dinosaurs were real personally they were a thing uh -huh. so cool like, yeah, i was a dinosaurs Pretty kid cool. he was a trans the answer is yes dinosaurs i was very much a trans kid I think dinosaurs would be in that in that period where God is creating all of the the life forms. I you know I personally I like the idea that he was playing around and seeing what worked. You know I, I think that you can have a you can have a creationism wherein the Earth existed for billions of years without contradicting the Bible if you don't take the first six days of Genesis to be literal twenty four hour days, which I think is personally I don't I look at it as six separations of time i gotta say your comment made me curious though you were a dinosaur kid i was a train kid isaiah what were what was your obsession as a as a young lad i was super young i liked trains too like thomas and stuff when i was like five and six i was a train kid let's go i liked dinosaurs for a little while but then i got really into like soldiers like toy when i was like eight or nine i got really into like you know toy soldiers and like army man stuff did you have the the, uh, the toy soldier video game for gamecube by any chance did i did wow that's i missed that flashback. that was such yeah. a fun one <laughs> yeah i forgot i think i had it on the playstation the first playstation yeah when yeah the, it's a flashback but yeah the the og call of duty for our generation oh <laughs> yeah Let's see. Mine was the uh, the Goldeneye game for I think it was N sixty four. That was fun. Uh, Second or Tenebris for, said, uh, "Imagine exploring the universe when you find a beautiful garden world, and Uriel shows up and goes, whoops, this area isn't ready yet.' Then yeets you back to Earth." Vader's <laughs> <laughs> loading. Uh, um, and uh, loading. Here, here's another theological one. There we go. <laughs> uh, it, I, there's account. no i'm sorry there's no way i'm gonna be able to pronounce this i don't even know where to start but the question was why are there no female pastors when there are a lot of powerful female figures in the bible it goes back to paul right for christianity at least yeah, paul and peter uh the beginners of the church yeah yeah they they decide I, I can only assume they decided no women because jesus chose men and didn't choose any women i, I mean there's there's some very strict uh gender roles in the bible um you know it, it it's it's hard to say personally in my opinion i i don't i don't have a good answer for that um all i know is that's what it what they said i mean it's 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 just that it's just that different people were called to different things you know, a lot of the men who were in jesus's time were called to be the ones who were most often executed uh and <laughs> placed in much more violent situations um order to get the word out but they were definitely more of a warrior type and that was kind of who god wanted to be the ones to lead the church those who 
willing to be like you know quite literally in some sense as a fighter but it's no sense saying there's some superiority between one or the other all are called just some to different roles than other yeah I, I agree with that i think there's it, simply that like you said that's just who god picked you know? yeah there's there's roles for women in leadership there's roles for men in leadership they're just different roles you know i it, i don't but personally, I don't think that your sex has anything to do with whether or not you could adequately teach somebody about the Bible. But, you know, that's there, there's a reason for it. It's not necessarily my job to understand that reason or even agree with that reason. Just it's it's there, you know. Um, and I will say we are we're going to wrap it up after I get through these final questions. So if you send something after this, we appreciate it, but we probably won't get to it is almost 10 o'clock and we have to shoot. So, uh, let's see, uh, your average Fox said when paradise lost video has brought me into Christianity after being anti-religious my whole life. I'm new and I've only gotten to the book of numbers so far, but do you think good people go to heaven regardless of faith? We address that a lot in the, the hell episode. Welcome to hell. Um, it's either the second or the third one. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, you and I had slightly differing opinions on this. Yeah. I mean, my, I I believe that it's just the Bible says effectively of uh, we are all given a choice. Uh, the free will of humanity has never been taken away from us. So we can choose to return to the side of God, sin naturally separates us from, or we can choose to not and simply be uh, left to our own devices and the devil's devices after we die. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, effectively, the, the the I said no man cometh to the Father but by me. Um, now, to what degree belief in God is true, as, you know, the, we've talked about people who are in outer lands, away from God, and scripture, what have you. But at the end of the day, it is trust in the creator that gets you to heaven, not how good you are, yeah. effectively. Yeah, I think I agree with that. My my only question is, is is the the time after we die, is that the immediate, do we get sent right to hell, or is there some sort of purgatory period? Is there some way to redeem yourself after death? I'm curious about it. I'm still working on you know, developing an understanding of that. I would like to believe that there is a, uh, an option for atonement after death. But again, I, I don't feel confident to tell you one way or another. I would suggest be the best person you can be and try and find a way to accept Christ into your life if you want to make it to heaven. Um, but, you know, again, I, no, no person knows all the answers. The best we can do is try and understand. Um, yeah. Oh, we were supposed to get you to say you will not see heaven because of a yoinky splinky comment. I, but it was so long ago that I really don't remember. Fair. Oh, Isaiah, have uh, you seen uh, have you seen any of those videos of your audio on uh, mainly TikTok at this point yet, or Instagram Reels? Oh, uh, not sure which audio. It's the audio of, uh, and next time you think that the government oh, yeah. wouldn't something, something, oh, yes, they would. Oh, I, I saw a couple of those. A couple of people sent those to me. There's a yeah. lot. I yeah. can't open my app that, is without. Is that making the rounds? I, I literally can't scroll through my app without coming across one of them. It's everywhere. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. You are cool. currently yeah. a viral yeah. sound on TikTok, which I think is funny. Oh, that's very, that's I, very cute. Oh, yeah. Somebody also, <laughs> somebody made a YouTube video that got like, they have like, 20 or like 20 some subscribers and they made a video they clipped uh the the dennis martin one the scene where we're talking about footwear and he pans down <laughs> i'm wearing yeah, yeah somebody clipped yeah. that like 11 second clip they have under 100 subscribers and it got like 67,000 views <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny i commented on it i was like you should have been there it's called drip oh uh, well yeah that's the best part it's like no 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 back up here it's called drip stop that oh drip. but all right i can't remember back up yeah. we yeah. finally we finally made it through all of the theological questions there were a lot in there that i do really appreciate we just didn't have time for them um you know thank you guys so much for supporting the show for supporting this channel for supporting isaiah's channel and for supporting the the new weird bible channel which i'm very excited about because it's going to be a place where we can do more varied content do the podcast and also have some more self-contained little stories so hopefully that becomes a uh you know a, a solid well-performing thing and we can keep it going and dedicate the time to it uh and you know that's uh that's what i would say what about you isaiah anything you want to tell the people absolutely 
thank you all very much for being here. I appreciate it. Check us out over on the new channel. And uh, yeah, thank you for being here. It really is a blessing. Appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you all so much for che for checking us out, for hanging out, um, for asking your questions. And uh, we will see you in a month. Bye, guys.